Warm, partly cloudy day on the island of Oahu at Aloha Stadium, sitting on the hill up above Pearl Harbor as the Washington State Cougars of the Pac-10 Conference meet the Houston Cougars of the Southwest Conference. Washington State designated the visiting team will come out of the tunnel with a record of eight and three wearing the white uniform. Dennis Erickson, in his second season at Washington State, has turned the team around, made them a challenger, put them in the top 20 this season, and produced one of the most explosive offenses in the country, as Washington State finished third in the Pac-10, tied with Arizona. Here are the Washington State Cougars. And right behind them, the Houston Cougars with a record of 9-2. and two. Jack Pardee is the head coach, the man that went to school at A&M. He has been a coach of the year in the NFC, the NFL, the USFL, and now he's back in the part of the country he so likes, Houston, Texas. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson along with Lynn Swan. I guess as they say here, Meli Kaliki Maka. It's a Christmas day, and it's a beautiful day, and we're anticipating a very interesting football game this afternoon and in Hawaii annually I find the most adventurous Santa Claus in all the world yesterday he was riding around in an outrigger today he's floating in on a parachute I guess that goes with the character of the kind of a ball game we're gonna have today Swanee where is Charlie you go down to the blue Jeep and turn left uh, Billy you go down to the white truck and turn right Tommy goes down to the manhole cover and waits for mom and a shopping cart. That's the run and shoot. And if you schedule it all to the A train, that is the run and shoot. At probably its basic form, the run and shoot offense is much like the wishbone offense is for the run, the run and shoot is for the pass. It's option football based on what kind of defense you see. When Andre Ware comes up to the line of scrimmage, the first thing he looks for is it a zone defense or is it a man-to-man -man defense? Then he only takes the open man based on what that defensive gives him. It's a pure read from start to finish. You're talking about defense now. Oftentimes when you expect a big offensive explosion, the defensive people will step up and say, wait a minute. Now, I think it's important to remember that these defensive teams practice against this wide open offense every day. Well, they step up because of their ego and their pride. They want right. to earn their keep. And they are very accustomed to seeing the wide receivers run down the field catching passes all afternoon. Both teams have very high-profile attacks on offense so that the defensive secondary won't take all day to get adjusted, to react to the ball in the air, to react in the zones. They're going to do it very, very quickly. They are not stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know, smash-mouth football. This is finesse football. And this afternoon, the coaches and their tactics and their decisions on what fronts to play will be as important as how the players execute in this ball game. And, of course, the forward pass, as Swanee said, will be a very important weapon on both sides of the ball at the 7th Annual Eagle Aloha Bowl. And it's Christmas Day in Hawaii, and this is what it was like yesterday down around the beach as some of the prettiest young people in the world wish the world Merry Christmas. The Eagle Aloha Bowl. Brought to you by Eagle, makers of Premier, Medallion, and the all-new Summit. Only at your Jeep and Eagle dealer where you can expect the best. By Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. And by Thrifty, the official car rental company of the Eagle Aloha Bowl. We told you a moment ago how it is they say Merry Christmas in Hawaii, Meli Kaliki Maka. I can handle that. Happy New Year, I can't do it. I'm just not that talented. But Mike Adamley is. Right, Mike? Hey, Kaliki Maka, and Haoli Makahiki Ho. That's Happy New Year's to you and Lynn. You know, as you mentioned earlier, this is a Christmas present for both teams, sort of a tropical reward for fine seasons. But Houston may have added incentive. For many players on their roster, this is their final chance to win a college bowl game. The recent NCAA probation will keep the Cougars out of postseason competition in 1989 and 1990. So a good performance today will go a long way in easing some of that disappointment. Something that head coach Jack Pardee has stressed all week long. Keith? 
All right, Mike, thanks very much. Tom Payton, the national merchandise manager for the Eagle Division of the Chrysler Motor Corporation, had the coin toss a moment ago. The coin he used, a 1986 Liberty Silver Dollar issued by the U.S. Mint to commemorate the Statue of Liberty's 100th birthday and proceeds from the sale of these coins used in the restoration and future maintenance of the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Houston won the toss, and they want the football. James Dixon is the man in the middle with Weatherspoon, Chuck, and Paul Smith on each side of him. Jason Hansen, a freshman, number four, from Spokane, Washington, will kick off for the Washington State Cougars. And the Eagle Aloha Bowl is on. It is a very high-hanging kick to the one-yard line, and James Dixon comes up the middle with it and finds a crease, and he's gone. One man to beat. One man. And he is caught from behind. So the Houston Cougars almost break it all the way. Jay Langwin, a defensive back, finally ran him down at the 15-yard line. Well, Merry Christmas. We thought it was going to be a high-scoring football game. You can see here, they get great blocking. He is going to go 84 yards. And I am surprised to some degree that he didn't run away from everybody here. He's waiting on the block out here in front. The kicker does a great job of forcing him to the inside where he has stopped just short of going all the way for a touchdown. All right, the Houston Cougars have put their high-powered machine with a motor running. It's uh, metal to metal right here. And let's see what they do out of the running shoot. The ball is just inside the 16. It'll be first down from the 15. Phillips goes in motion. Handoff goes to running back Kimball Anders. And Anders, who will take the first snap, he's been doing that all year. We'll see Chuck Weatherspoon very shortly, I am sure. There was a gain on the play of about a yard. It is where Andre at quarterback. Andre's a good one. He's only a sophomore. Kimball Anders getting the start. James Dixon, Jason Phillips, those inside receivers who catch so many balls for so much yardage. Kevin Mason and Brian Williams are outside. Big people up front of Moser, Hearn, Gant, Forsyth, and Bain did his second down at nine from the Washington State 15 for Houston. Again, Phillips goes in motion, gives them trips at the top of the picture, and back goes Ware, a little through the whip to the right side, over the head of James Dixon, incomplete, third down and nine coming up. The Washington State Cougars line up defensively this way, and the pressure's on the defense right now. The big people down are Gray, Ledbetter, Savage, and Cook, all healthy finally. Alipate and O'Neill are the linebackers, and they open with a nickel defense. That is five defensive backs. Landrum, Todd, Holmes, Lee, and Ricard. Paul Smith, number 81, checks in now. Andre Ware, the formation is relatively the same every time. He checks off. He calls the play. He looks to throw it. He's got a hole. He takes off to the 10 and down at the 10. And it'll be fourth down. That is successfully defending the run and shoot offense. Anytime you can get Andre Ware, who is a good athlete, to run the football instead of throwing it means the receivers are covered. You've done your job, and he can he can't last all afternoon having to run the football that way. Roman Anderson will come on into the ball game for the Houston Cougars for a 27-yard field goal try. He led the Southwest Conference in scoring this year. His daddy was Bill Anderson. And Bill had a bunch of college uh, football records. A quarterback, the uh, Tulsa Hurricanes, back in the middle 60s. Snap a little low, the kick drilled a good. And so the Houston Cougars off that explosive kickoff return by Dixon jump on the board first and lead it three to nothing. Jack Pardee, the Houston Cougars coach on the left, Dennis Erickson on the right. Jack, Texas to the core, Dennis Erickson back in the state where he was born. The state of Washington, grew up in Everett. His dad, Pinky, was a longtime coach around the Everett, Washington area, north of Seattle. I think they're very indicative, Keith, of the coach of the 80s. They are very wise when it comes to football knowledge, but they're very much in tune with their players, as if they really understand the individuals and their psychological profiles, helping them become better people and better athletes. Johnny Robertson will kick it off for Houston. Number 11 is Ed Tingstad, deep man, along with number 13, Victor Wood. Wood, the swifter of the two. Houston three, Washington State nothing. 
The Cougars now trying to get some field position on their kickoff return. Wind swirls around inside Aloha Stadium. It goes to Victor Wood at the five. He finds a crease. Almost popped out of there. Gets out near the 28-yard line. So he was one step away from burning up some real estate himself. Washington State now will come out with Tim Rosenbaugh at the quarterback position, and they're going to spread you all over the field, too. Both teams stretch you horizontally and then vertically. They run it sideways sometimes, but then when you least expect it, they hit you deep. The numbers on Rosenbaugh. He is a junior. He's a big fella. He's a tough guy. He's a quarterback with a linebacker mentality, kind of like Jim Kelly. There are three wide outs at the top. They send Broussard in motion. It gives them four wide outs and Rosenbaugh up the middle. Can't find anybody. And he was a half a step from breaking it big. But Glenn Montgomery, who anchors the defensive front for Houston, reached across and brought him down. Glenn from Gretna, Louisiana. He comes in this game, 107 tackles, 12 sacks. He's got to play strong up the middle. If this defense is going to have any kind of chance, there you see he gets good pressure. He holds his position, and then when Rosenbaugh tries to come up the middle, he's there for the, tack for the tackle. Good strategy. The cover did its job for Houston. Second down and nine as Tim picked up a yard off the play. They go to Broussard. He bounces outside. And he is going to be short of his first down as Glenn Montgomery again makes the tackle for Houston. It'll be a couple of yards short of the first. Washington State lines up with Rosenbaugh at quarterback. Broussard healthy finally at the, uh, the single back position with Stallworth, Wood, and Pelham, the wideouts. The people up front, and Dennis Erickson says this is the strength of his offensive football team. Well sent, the tight end. Harper, Mahalchik, Wolf, Makama, their starting center all year, hurt. He'll do the deep snapping today. Utley is an All-American alongside of Dyko, very effective on that right side, on the strong side. They run it again and get the first down. As Broussard carries it across the 40, out near the 42. A little pushing going on in an offensive line, but true to Mike Adam Adamley's report earlier, they are coming out running the football when all season long they have set up the run with the pass. Broussard coming to the sidelines on first down, Washington State's football. The officials today are Big 8 Conference. John Laurie, the referee, I'll run the rest for you in just a moment. Single back offense has produced a lot of yardage this year on the ground for Washington State. Broussard going for over 1,100 yards. Rich Swinton, who had the big ball game and the big win over UCLA, he's in there now at the running back position. He's a sophomore. Montclair Prep near Canoga Park, and he can really move it. Not big, but quick. And they go play action, and Rosenbaugh's pass is down the middle to Stallworth, who's also out of Montclair Prep. And it's complete for a first down at the Houston 40. He was wide open down the middle. Alton Montgomery brought him down. They had the right play call. The center of the field is wide open. Stallworth, that name is somewhat familiar. His brother, John Stallworth, uh, excuse me, his cousin is John Stallworth, the receiver I played with for many years. He just runs a simple pattern. You can't call it a, a post, and you can't call it a slant. He just bent it into the center of the field, and he was wide open. And Broussard is back now at the running back position for Washington State. And they have to call timeout because the formation was uh, called from the sidelines and they never did get it nailed down. And so Rosenbaugh takes the timeout. Yes, that's Diamond Head. The explosiveness of that hunk providing the fertility for much of the island of Oahu many years ago. The ball is resting precisely on the Houston Cougars 40-yard line. First down, Washington State. Now they go way wide to the bottom of the picture. With three wide outs on the same side. Nobody back of Rosenball. Pressure comes, gets it away in a hurry. Victor Wood wiggling around. Gets about nine yards. Victor's 5'10", 170, a senior from Seattle. And he's very quick. The Houston defensive group, Jenkins, Montgomery, Oglesby, Warren, the four down. Lathan, Thomas, and Burnett, the backers, and their gamblers. Jackson, Norwood, Montgomery, and Callaway, the defensive secondary. Houston will gamble a goodly bit on uh, defense. This is Broussard, a foot race, down inside the five. 
Now you see already why Dennis Erickson says his offensive line is the basic of his ball club. Steve Broussard is only 5'7", but he is 210 pounds. And he has deceptive speed. Look at the great cut he makes on the inside. Now it's a sprint. He just runs to the outside. They have the angle. He almost outruns it to get almost into the end zone. That's 27 yards on the carry key. And it's first down and goal for Washington State at the Houston 4. Broussard. Line of scrimmage. Brought down by Darren Warren, a 250-pound junior from Crockett, Texas. The outside people for the Houston defense are going to have a real tough day because they've got to put some pressure to stop the outside game and also try and force everything to the inside to make something happen. Boy, they can run. Oh, they can run real quick. Rich Swinton checks in now at the running back position on second down and goal from the four. Broussard comes out. They're going to alternate those backs because fatigue is going to be a factor as the day wears on. That's Wood going in motion. Goes the ball back to throw it. Gets pressure. He's hit. Ball comes loose. Houston's after it. Houston may have it. There's a Cougar down underneath, but I think the Houston Cougars have the ball, and Tim Rosenbaugh is the man down on the field. Alton Montgomery hit him first, looping from the outside. Keith Jenkins recovered the ball. See Rosenbaugh down. That last play, he was dropping back, looking all the way to his left. You see, and he's going to take a little drop back. He's going to be looking in his direction. All the pressure's going to come from the outside. He won't even see it coming as he's trying to read that defense right around the end, and he's hit. If he had known that pressure was coming, he would have gotten that arm cocked up and thrown it away, Keith. Well, that's the way the Houston Cougars beat Wyoming badly. They looped from the outside with that great foot speed and really hit people. We're back. Here's the play that caused the fumble. Number 29, Alton Montgomery is the man who's going to make the hit. But watch number 64, Keith Jenkins, as he comes in, engages the lineman, holds him bit. Right here, he grabs him, holds him, pulls him down. Then Montgomery goes around to the outside, just enough angle to make the hit, blindside hit, and cause the fumble. Now, that's a bit of defensive holding, but when you can get away with it, it's okay. Caught in the uncaught. Turnovers, like, it's, it's not an interception, but it's a turnover. Rosenbach got up and trotted off the field, and uh, looks to be clear-headed now. From the 23-yard line, down the middle goes Houston. No, too long. So the Cougars coming out throwing again. Big number 65 in the middle of the line for Houston is William Gant. He's the center, 6'2", and uh, hardly a fragile lad at 300 pounds. 6'2", and as they say, three bills. <laughs> <laughs> he takes up a lot of real estate when he hunkers down, I'll tell you that. He's an excellent pass blocker. Makes all the offensive line calls for the Houston Cougars. Stumbles a bit moving off the step, throws it back the other way. It is caught by number 20, Jason Phillips, a senior from Houston. Short yardage pickup, but that is the nature of the offense. The passes oftentimes are not long. They just get it to him in a hurry, and those in -ride inside receivers, Dixon and Phillips, have the athletic ability to make a big play out of it. And you, you see them back quickly on the offensive line of scrimmage, running another play. They're in 10 here, Keith is not to let the Washington State Cougars get too much rest to try and wear them down with a hurry-up offense. Chuck Weatherspoon in. He's got the ball. Bounces to the right. Goes for the first down. Spinning twice and picks up about 12 yards on the carry. Chuck Weatherspoon is a sophomore from La Habra, California. 5'8", but he weighs 210 pounds, and his legs are pistons. He and Broussard are built very similar. He is an opportunistic running back, Chuck Weatherspoon. As we said earlier, the run and shoot offense designed to throw the football, which means that the opportunities to run come few and far between. On first down from the 37, Andre Ware down the middle, incomplete, dropped by Paul Smith, thrown behind him a little bit, Paul trying to turn around and grab it, and he couldn't reel it in. Talking to Andre Ware yesterday, as we have a little mix-up on the field, but it's resolved, Andre said this about how they wanted to go at Washington State's defense early on. Well, basically, we just want to just go out and take what they're going to give us. Uh, just execute our offense. You know, the, if there's openings in their zone, just just find the open receiver. If they want to give us a long ball, we'll take that also. 
Andre right now, one out of four in his passing for four yards. Number five comes wide now, Brian Williams. You've got to keep your eye on him because he, all, he plays the whole game out there by himself. Well, you get three occupied in the middle of the field and suddenly bingo, there he is. Penalty flags are flying as they run a little reverse with James Dixon, number 22, carrying the ball. Gets a couple of yards. Let's see about the penalty. Here is uh, John Laurie. Offside, Washington State. Umpire is Dean Raymer, the headline. Line judge Dale Troyers. Field judge is Ron Leapsack. Side judge is Bill Schmidt. And the back judge is Mike Weir. And they're all out of the Big Eight conference. Chief, when I talk to the defensive coordinator for the Washington State University team, John Schmidt, he said that he's not quite so sure that Andre Weir reads everything when he comes up to the line. So they're going to try and disguise some coverages, give him some false reads, and make him throw into coverage, hopefully to create the turnovers. The penalty makes it second down and five for Houston. Where back, getting pressure, gets his pass away. It's almost picked off, should have been picked off, really. Artie Holmes had the ball on his hands and couldn't hold it. But there's one thing, I want to point this out early, because this may happen later, too. As you go that direction, right to left, and look back toward the ball, you're going to be looking into a very, very bright sun. That's right. And this might have been one of those situations, Keith, where they gave him a false read. As you take a look, this receiver's going to come down and break out this way, but he's got inside coverage here, and this man will be on the outside just waiting for him. The only thing that stops this from being an interception is that the defensive back does not turn around, does not get over there in time to make, that, to make the hit, but he is there in position. The Houston Cougars are dinged with a penalty here, holding call, and that's going to back them up to their 32-yard line, where it'll be second down and about 16, close to 17. Ware gives it to Weatherspoon, and Spoon's back to the original line of scrimmage. He gets a lot of yards. Rosenbaugh throwing on the sidelines. He took a wicked lick from Alton Montgomery, but he's up and about, and he's all right. And here's Mike Adamley. Jim Rosenbaugh is okay, Keith. After that uh, fumble down there on the goal line, or very close to the goal line as Washington State was going in, he just had the wind knocked out of him, and he is going to go back in on the next series, so he's fine. All righty, third down. Not eight. Straight back. Gets pressure from the outside and going to go down. First sack for Washington State. Inside the 30, back at the 28, Ivan Cook and Dan Weber. The two men who get him, 76 and 92. Defensive lineman inside for Washington State, occupying the offensive line of the Houston Cougars. Allowing Ivan Cook to get to that outside and put the pressure on him. Hunting time now for Houston as Simon Rodriguez averaging just under 42 yards on 58 punts this season. Standing back, he'll hit it from around his 17-18. Bear puts it upfield for Victor Wood. Good spinning kick. Victor hauls it in at the 23. And you got a clip against Washington State. So Washington State's going to back up on that clip. It was very obviously a clip right in front of a man wearing a striped shirt, but a very, very good punt by Rodriguez. He got a little help from the wind, and he sailed it 49 yards. I believe that was John Landrum, number 18, the man who made the block in the back. On January 2nd, we've got a college triple header for you. Uh, center stage will be the 75th Rose Bowl game from Pasadena with Michigan, the Big Ten Conference champions against Southern California. The Pac-10 champions, both going undefeated in their conference play this year. Michigan, USC. There were times, especially when Jack played, he was not always the affable, level-headed fellow. He was a man of fury at times when he was a linebacker for the Rams, but he's become a heck of a coach. First down, Washington State from the 12. Rosenball going to throw it. Looking for somebody to throw it to. Now he's got to throw it away. That won't do it. He runs it on out just outside the 10 and will lose a couple of yards. So there's one of the things that uh, caused him some grief last year. He had 24 interceptions a year ago. Went to Dennis Erickson offseason. Said, I, I'm not going to make a quarterback. Let me go back and play linebacker. 
Well, they wouldn't have anything of that. But one thing that Dennis and the coaching staff worked on him is uh, don't take the abuse. Get rid of the thing. Don't let those big old linemen and linebackers be hammering on you. Well, he got out of the bounds on that play, Keith, but <laughs> not by much. Lost a couple, second down, 12. They run it. And it is Broussard out to about the 14. Broussard uh, is a junior, so he's back next year. Swinton is only a sophomore. And behind them, Paul Carr is only a freshman. A lot of these people are going to be coming back next year for Washington State. Terrific time in the year to find Swinton. Broussard goes down with an injury. Swinton comes in, has a 100-yard game. Big game against UCLA. No letdown whatsoever. Third down and long here. Third and eight. Pressure on. Broussard gets it away. Oh, what a great catch. Merry oh, my Christmas. Gosh, that's all reflex. Michael Wimberley. Michael Wimberley. Merry Christmas. He just got a gift. Timing pass pattern. We'll take a look. This ball is in the air before he turns his back. Now watch when he turns how quickly the ball is there. Coming from the right side of the screen, right there to his outside. He grabs it with one hand and pulls it in. That's that is one of the toughest catches he'll ever have to make in his life. Well, that's as good as you want to see. First down, Washington State at the 26-yard line. And it's Swinton in motion. Rosenbach goes back with it. Incomplete, just barely, Elmer Thomas. That was very, very good coverage on Elmer Thomas, but he still almost hauled it in and juggled it a bit, juggling all the way to the ground. Elmer came to Washington State from SMU. There's a flag down on the field, but Elmer Thomas is working against man-to-man -man coverage, and the man who caused the fumble earlier in the game, Alton Montgomery, was a man who had great inside position on the play. It's an offside call against the Houston Cougars, so Washington State off the incomplete now will profit from that. Make it first down and five. Here's Alton Montgomery, six feet, 200 pounds, a sophomore. One interception and one sack on the season. Broussard is back in, Swinton out. Rosenball gives it to him, and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Very, very quick move by Warren, number 97. I'll tell you, these two defensive ends, Keith Jenkins and Darren Warren, are lightning quick. They're not all that big. Warren is 250, and Jenkins is 235. Well, the big catch for both these football teams uh, on the offensive line, you've got Mike Utley and Dyko. Utley is 6'6", 290. Dyko is 6'6", 296. And they can keep you out in the center for a long time. On second down, Rosenbaugh keeps, gets his pass away, down the middle, thrown a little bit behind the intended receiver, well sent the tight end. Doug at 6'4", 235 from Richville, Washington. Here is Mike Adamley. Keith, this year's net proceeds from the Elite Eagle Aloha Bowl will go to the Muscul Muscular Dystrophy Association and Jerry's Kids. And this year's poster girl is six-year-old Denny Delos Reyes from Hawaii. She was part of the pregame ceremonies. And we just wanted to say Merry Christmas. And thank you for being part of it. Congratulations, and good to see you. Merry Christmas. The Eagle Aloha Ball, more than just a football game. Keith? Third down and nine. Rosen ball back. Pressure coming, gets his pass off. Got a man over there, and then almost intercepted. Rosen ball under pressure. Did not get as much on the ball as he wanted, and Cedric Calloway almost stepped in front. Remember when we were talking about the Houston defense being one that is willing to take more gambles, Keith? Yep. Right there, you saw an example of it. They had man-to-man -man coverage, and they blitzed. Most teams in a game like this will wait until you cross the 50-yard line before they feel like they have to blitz. Houston's now doing it, building the confidence of man-to-man -man coverage against the Washington State receivers. Rob Myers is in the punt. Win might be a little bit of his face here with Callaway, the he's man for the Houston Cougars. Kick is out of there. Good kick. Ooh, that's a handy. He goes all the way back to his 13. Now he turns the other way and finds a crack. They can run out to the 41. He went all the way back to his 13 to take that 58-yard punt and then returned it 28 yards to the 41. <laughs> Y'all, that's Jack. From the 41, 
First down for the Houston Cougars. They lead in the ball game by a score of three to nothing. Time remaining first quarter, four minutes and 35 seconds. Washington State had it first and goal on the Houston four, turned it over. Alden Montgomery forcing a fumble, Tim Rosenbaugh, and Washington State's been backed up since. Now Houston with very good field position and Chuck Weatherspoon at the running back slot. He has the ball and blows it right up the middle. And takes a lick. Oh boy, he took a lick from Artie Holmes, number 19. But he's right at the first down marker. Weatherspoon will go out after that hit. Take just a bit of a break. Artie Holmes, six footer, 205, senior from Rialto, California. It is a first down for Houston at the Washington State 49. We're back. Good protection. Pass down the middle. Pass caught by Andrews. Ball not loose. Cougars pick it up. Incomplete forward pass. A lick by Ron Lee, the strong safety for Washington State out of Tulare, California. Knocked that ball out of the grasp of Anders. The one thing about uh, Ware, Swanee, he does put some zip on it. He certainly does, but one thing about the zone defense, when you're sitting back and playing everything in front of you, it gives you the opportunity to come up and lay a hit on someone. Now, I talked, we talked about the secondary, watching receivers at practice every day. His reaction in the zone was very good as he got there just as the ball was touched to knock it loose. Could have been a fumble. He had almost tucked it away. Second down and ten. Little quick pop goes over to number 22, Dixon. And Dixon picks up about ten yards inside the 40 near the 38 of Washington State. That's a good example, Keith, of what you were talking about earlier. The short passes and the guys going for big yardage. That pass went about a half yard downfield and James Dixon picked up the other nine and a half. It'll be just a little bit short. I think they'll bring the change in. Let's go to this point. Jack Marty talking with him yesterday. I asked Jack if the sanctions and probation imposed on the University of Houston had impacted this football team. This is what he said. The uh, allegations didn't involve the players we have now or the coaches we have now our players weren't having to take time out to meet with attorneys or with ncaa investigators so they've been able to keep their concentration on their school work on the football to be uh, to worry about the things they've had control of so it uh, it, it does affect us um, i'm sorry we i thought it was very harsh penalties but uh it really doesn't it hasn't affected i give our guys credit they've been over able to overcome it on third down and very short, they put it in the air. They only needed about a half a yard. They go to the air and they don't catch it, and now it's fourth down. But it's probably four down territory. We'll see. I guess not. Here comes the kicking team off. Phillips was the man that had the ball bounce off his hand. I thought for a minute that Jack might be willing to, to go on fourth. I'm, I'm surprised that he didn't just decide to run it with a half yard, but as he said earlier in the season, I'll throw from my own five-inch line, and I'll throw from your five-inch line. Rodriguez in the punt. His first today was a 49-yarder. Here he wants a knuckleball. Just pop it up. No, he doesn't get it. He spins it toward the corner and knocks it out of bounds down around the 12. So, Washington State again with very poor field position here. The punt traveled only 26 yards. USF and G Sugar Bowl, the Florida State Seminoles, and the Auburn Tigers. We'll have that for you at the end of our college football triple header, January 2nd. It'll start at 8.30 Eastern Time. And the Monday night folks, including Lynn Swan, who's with me today, will be doing that ball game for you. New Year's Eve in New Orleans. Not a bad place to spend it. We've got to suffer. <laughs> All right, Rosenbaugh is on the field now. Broussard is at the running back. They've got three wide outs at the top of the picture. Give it to Broussard, and he blows it up to the 20 and across to the 20, near the 21. I mean, one step, and he's in full speed, isn't he? Well, that, you get an idea of just how quick he is. He's one of the fastest people on this football team. Plus, at his height, he stays low to the ground, and a lot of people compare him Keith to Joe Morris, uh, the way he runs the ball, or Roger Craig. He didn't want to come out either. No, he didn't. He didn't. 
He'll appreciate it in the fourth quarter. Then. Right. Second down and two. They give the ball to Swinton, and Rick Swinton will run for the first down. Out to the 28-yard line. Lamar Lathan brought him down. Lamar is a junior out of Wharton, Texas. Jim Eddy is a defensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars. What he wants to do is get the pressure in from the outside. The defensive line is quick. They're going to run games. What I believe Washington State is going to attempt to do now, Keith, and that's Eddie, the coordinator right there, is to run the ball up the middle and test it, and then go to the air as he just did there. That was a bad pass by Tim, and he knows it because he had Stallworth wide open in the middle, and on top of that, the lone defender between Stallworth and the end zone had fallen down. I mean, that's how close they were to six points. But Stallworth uh, turning back inside. The pass was thrown behind him. Rosenball that time took one more step in his drop, too, to get a little more time. He usually takes, it's a three-step drop or it's a five-step drop. Sometimes it's only one, and I think they're realizing the one may not work one, so well. One ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's that sharp angle from the outside. He completed his first three. He's missed his last three. Pressure coming inside. Pass complete to Victor Wood. Short of the first down, and the penalty flag is thrown. As you can well imagine, Keith, the rhythm of that passing attack is very important. Penalty against Washington State. And that also is one of the things that Coach Eddie, Jim Eddie, would like to disrupt. If they can't actually get pressure and hit them and sack them, what they want to do is hurry him, especially when they're in man-to-man -man coverage, so he doesn't have all day to sit back. Football has moved back to the 23-yard line, where it is second down. And 15. Drops it off in a hurry, and it's dropped by Wellsen, the tight end. They and he had room, too. Oh, they, they, they are so lucky. I mean, when I say lucky, I'm talking about the Houston Cougars are so lucky. Not just the ball being dropped, but number two, Tim Stallworth had just gone down the field. The secondary for Houston was shifting over to the strong side, and they were caught. You see, look at Stallworth right there. He's breaking towards the middle of the field. The secondary is shifting over. There's nobody there. He is wide open, and he knows it. Find me. Look down here. So it is third down and 15. Pressure from the outside, and Rosenbaugh is sacked again. You, Darren Warren, number 97, looped and got him. You have to admire this hustling defense. Number 97, Darren Warren, the defensive end. He comes in from the outside using his speed. The pressure, they're just trying to tie up the All-American Utley on the inside. Geico, Paul Wolf, the center. And put the pressure in from the outside, and it's working extremely well here, Keith. Rob Myers is in. First punt was a 53-yarder. And Callaway is deep for Houston. He's number 25. Houston defense doing its job so far. Another good kick by Myers. High hanger. At the 35, Callaway gets one block, gets two blocks, and fumbles the football. And the Cougars of Washington State pursue it, but it goes out of bounds. And Houston retains it. Keith Rice came down and belted him, and the ball was loose, but it came out rolling smoothly to the sidelines instead of a wobbly bounce. And a very heads-up play. I don't know who the player was from the Houston Cougars who made the move, Keith. There's a ball was rolling to the outside. He didn't try and dive for the football. You know what he did? He hit the man Noble going the for man. the football, knowing if it rolled out of bounds that the Houston Cougars would maintain possession. Watch it here. The ball's going to be popped right out of here, out of his hands. Callaway loses it. Now, look. There's a hit on the player, not the football. Very heads-up move. That was Chris Moton, number six. Moton uh, had almost recovered it. They dump it off in a hurry to Ambers, and Anders is up. Good game past the 47-yard line for Houston, and a little bit short of his first down. Be a couple of yards short. Kimball Anders is the better of the two running backs coming out of the backfield catching passes, Keith. Weatherspoon checks in now, though, and he's the 
He is the lightning bolt out of the backfield, carrying the ball. Second down and two. Weatherspoon's got it. Number 91, Mark Ledbetter, grabs a hold of him. But he's strong, and he will have the first down, but there's a penalty flag, so let's see what the call is. Against Houston. With these offenses that we're looking at today, you're going to get a lot of that. If for no other reason, some of the wideouts are so far away that they have a little trouble really discerning, and oftentimes they'll, they'll budge a little and get a half step. I've been watching some of these receivers go in motion, Keith, and, and to me it appears that very often they are headed back towards the line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> They've done it twice and gotten away with it. Yeah. On, one on each side. on Andre Ware so far. He rolls to the right, has time, throws underneath, pass it complete, intended for James Dixon, and he threw it behind him a little bit. He has been off, you know, on this on this throwing quite a bit so far in this game. He's had people who have, he's had people who have been there who just, you know, aren't holding onto the ball, but he's also throwing it behind them. Yeah, both quarterbacks a little bit off uh, target right now. It'll be third down and about six now. Haven't heard much from Jason Phillips so far. Where three out of nine, 21 on third down. Penalty flag as Ware sets up. And they'll stop the play. And he was looking that time for Phillips. Phillips on a fly. Again, procedure call against the Houston Cougars. We're in the final minute of the first quarter of play with Houston leading three to nothing. That's an incredible step. Add to the fact, though, that uh, Weatherspoon ran for over 1,000. 5,331 yards total for this team. In 11 games. I never got 100 catches in 16 games. Third down and 12. Where goes big with it. Picked off. Accepted by Vernon Todd. Went to the well one time too many on that side. Washington State will have the football. First down at their own 45. He's throwing into zone coverage. I don't know if he was looking for man, but he's, the receiver's going to come out and break here. This corner's covering this man. This man doesn't drive him deep, so then he floats back, and he's in position for the play. The receiver has to force that man to come stay with him. He doesn't have the responsibility that he's able to float back in his own and pick the ball off. Rosenbaugh down the middle, got a man wide open. Stallworth falls down. Again, Houston is lucky. There's nobody behind Stallworth. He's home free for a touchdown, and he can't maintain his balance. First down, Washington State at the Houston 15. Well, maybe nobody we can see, but maybe the little people, the Minahunis of the islands, were down there grabbing at his ankles. <laughs> That's the only thing that would have stopped him from that touchdown. He just gets behind him. Stallworth, good play action here. Holds the coverage in the secondary. He just runs a low angle across the field, and he has everybody beat deep. Rosenbaugh gives the ball to Broussard, and Broussard is ridden down. Right about the line of scrimmage. Montgomery and Oglesby and having none of that. They just saddled him up right there. And we finished the first quarter of play with the Houston Cougars leading the Washington State Cougars three to nothing. Second quarter of play now in the Eagle Aloha Bowl from Hawaii. Three nothing, the Houston Cougars are leading. The Washington State Cougars are now threatening for the second time. Three wideouts, top of the picture. Tim Rosenball sets up on second down from the 15. Quarterback draw up the middle, and he's inside the 10, down around the 8. As Keith Jenkins made the defensive play for Houston, number 64. Well, it's a pretty good draw here. We've seen him with a three-step drop. He's just going to take the ball back right up and just go right up the middle. See him picking up good yardage. You can't take a lot of time when you come back on the draw. 
Big man out there in front of him. Number 72 is Ken Kuyper. Tim Mahalchik, number 74, the quick tackling guard. Third and three, Rosenbaugh's pass underneath. At the marker, may be good for a first down. Making the catch, Victor Wood. Right at the marker. They may need the change to define this one. They will bring him on. In that first quarter of play, Washington State had 20 plays, Houston 15. That pace will probably pick up. Well, the Houston Cougars are used to having teams have the ball more often. There are more plays. The offense has scored quickly throughout the year. The defense has done a good job on a per-play average. It's a little bit short. Length of the ball. Do you go or do you kick? They're going to go. They're going to go for it. There you see the stats for the first quarter. The plays, a turnover each. The Washington State team eating up more yardage. The Houston team basically shooting themselves in the foot key. Yep. Opportunities to score. They didn't take them. Uh, they made some great plays on defense, causing a fumble when Washington State was in scoring territory. But by the same token, taking chances on defense, they've given up some big plays. Yeah, they're lucky they're not behind already. Because there have been three times when uh, Washington State's had people wide open, nobody behind them. And they haven't handled it all. Right. Fourth down and about a foot. Broussard is the running back. He'll have the first down. Just barely because Keith Jenkins stepped in there and put a hit on him. But it looks to me if that marker is correct, <laughs> he'll have it. If he gets it, I think it's because of the bounce. Yep. <laughs> They'll have to measure again. It's that close. I'll tell you, here's when the official has to earn his keep. And he spots the ball on the play like that because contact was made, I think, well before the first down marker. I mean, he kind of bounced into it. It's close. Just barely, folks. Just barely. Take a look. Broussard, 5'7", 210 from low angle, takes his hand off. He's hit right there, and he just bounces up right there. <laughs> He's crawling for it. Walter Payton used to do that a lot. Then stick that football way out there, hoping he'd get a better mark. First and goal, Washington State, Houston 5. Broussard. Ball comes flying out of the pileup. Picked up by a Washington State Cougar. And touchdown, Victor Wood. Holy smokes, did you ever see anything like it? The ball came flying out like a grease pig. Wood picked it up and can it in. I have never seen it. I don't think you can do you that. You can't Dave. advance a fumble, no. You can't advance it because you, have, you can advance a fumble if you catch it in the air. If the running back is hit and he pops it up in the air, I think you can carry it in if it's on the same team. But that hit the ground, didn't it? It hit the ground, yeah. I, I thought it did. <laughs> <laughs> there is no instant replay in college football. Jason Hansen for the extra point. The touchdown stands. The extra point is good. And it's 7-3, to three, Washington State. That was... <laughs> So far, that is the play of the game. We'll take a look. There's a handoff into the goal again. He makes a cut, and the ball is going to pop out right there. It's just like it's shot out by a rocket launcher, and it's bouncing on the ground. But an offensive man can't advance it. A defensive man can't advance it. That's the point. That's the way they do Santa Claus at Ala Moana. My question on that play only is this. Does Broussard get an assist? <laughs> <laughs> he gets minus four yards is what he gets. Victor Wood gets 13 yards. Running the fumble in. Defensive man can't advance it. Offensive man can. And therein lies the difference. So Washington State now will kick it off. Jason Hansen, the freshman, strong leg. And deep Chuck Weatherspoon and Paul Smith for the Houston Cougars. High kick, one deep. 
Back at the end zone, two yards, and here comes James Dixon, the middle man. He broke it early, big, and this time, again, a good return. Boy, he's dynamite, isn't he? Comes out across the 25 near the 26. Trying to make something happen. He's got the speed. Been doing a good job for him all year long. And he's that's also small. shaken up after that tackle. Yeah, he is. He's going to stay, though. Kevin Mason in there at uh, receiver spot. Now he's a lanky fellow, 6'2", weighs only 155 pounds. Skinny. <laughs> <laughs> long legs, though. Skinny. First down for the Houston Cougars now as they send uh, Dixon in motion. Andre Ware sets him up and moves it back. Gets his pass off, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver, Brian Williams, that's the first time they have gone to Brian today, and as he made his cut to the inside, he fell down. Some of the trivial numbers at this point of ball game, Broussard's picked up 47 yards rushing. The Houston passing game, on the other hand, has only gone for 21 yards so far. Second quarter of play, 7-3, to three, Washington State out of the Pac-10, leading Houston out of the Southwest Conference. Andre Ware pumps it one time, he's missed in the backfield, turns it outside, and legs it up to the 30-yard line. I'll give you an example, Keith, of a, a bit of inexperience when you talk about track guys coming out for football. 86 Kevin Mason's a hurdler, and he's out here, and he's got pretty good football sense. Ware takes off and he's looking downfield. He's scrambling. A receiver has to work himself open to come back. What Mason did was turn around his back to him and block somebody. It gives him nobody to throw the football and it forces him to continue the run. Weatherspoon checks in now on third down. Third and six. Now he's got his people where he wants them. Give it to Weatherspoon. Turn him upside down at about the 32-yard line. So the kicking team now will come on for Houston. Well, what do we talk about? The defense oftentimes will stand up and steal the show. And right now, the defense on both sides playing very well. Well, you said it at the top of the show. Very often you're expecting a high-scoring game. Washington averaging 35.5, Houston 41 points a game, and we're not seeing it right now. A lot of pressure. The kick is away and a flag. They deck the kicker, Rodriguez, and there's a flag laying right at his foot. Long rolling kick all the way down uh, inside the 10, but there's a flag waiting back up at the 21. And Randall McWilliams looked like number 30, the man that ran into him. It goes as a 60-yard punt, but they're hauling it back upfield. Washington State sent everybody, and you you got to hit the ball. If you tip the ball, then you can go ahead and run over it. But then they you, didn't. Then you've got a shot. I don't understand why they take a chance sending all these people coming in at the punter when their defense has been playing well. They've got they're going to get the ball back. They call it roughing. And it's a big one. It seems like an unnecessary risk to have taken at this juncture in the ballgame, Keith. Well, there was no room. Everybody was so close together, you simply couldn't have avoided the kick. When you get that many people in his face, somebody's going to run over him, and they did. And the penalty moves the ball all the way out to the 46-yard line for a first down for the Houston Cougars. New life. Kimball Anders, the running back now for Houston. Where pumps it again, goes down the middle. No, nice play, very, very good play by the defender for Washington State. Number 26. And 26 is his Ron number. Ricard. He's he the nickel in. man. He is the nickel man. They started this game with five defensive backs. You see him right there. He's playing inside. It's man-to-man -man coverage all the way. Jason Phillips, a premier receiver. He's on the outside with a great effort to get up and tip this ball away. Phillips had concentration all the way, waiting for the ball to come over his shoulder. But Ricard made the great play. And there was nobody behind Jason. He was gone if he gets it. And if he got it, they would have been just there, behind him. Right. Second down and ten. 
there now, three out of 12, 21 yards, one interception. Up the middle goes Kim Melanders to midfield. That'll be a pickup of about four yards. We talk about Andre Ware coming to the line of scrimmage, reading that defense to see what's going on. He sent a man in motion. When he sent this man in motion, nobody moved back here, so it's a zone. He then, therefore, he doesn't change the play, takes the ball, and going to run it right up the middle to try and take advantage of that defense. If they move, it's a man coverage, he's going to put the ball in the air and look for that one-on-one -on -one coverage somewhere on the field. Third down for Houston. And six. Knocked down. Number 99, Marlon Brown, a junior defensive end, was looping to the outside, saw the ball, slapped it away. So now Rodriguez is back on the field. And Victor Wood will go deep for Washington State. What kind of defense is this, Keith? They've held where is three out of 13, had one intercepted, forced to run twice, and sacked once. They almost jump off sides. Rodriguez got it away. Boy, he really shoots it, doesn't he? Yes. It's deep in the end zone and beyond the field of play. It will be Washington State's ball first down at its 20. That was a 50-yard bullet off the foot of Rodriguez. The Houston Cougar band is not going to come. And they squawked. And they waved their arms. And they stomped their feet. And the folks went to their pockets. Came up for the money, and here they are. Whooping it up at the Eagle Aloha Bowl. Rosenbaugh sets him now at the 20. First down, Washington State. Bends the ball off to uh, Steve Broussard. And Broussard's got five yards. With all of these people spread out, all of these options and all of these checks, how do you call a play? Well, I asked Tim Rosenbaugh about it. Here's the way he explains it. The formation is signaled in by our uh, offensive line coach, Greg Smith, and, and uh, and the play comes in from a wide receiver, running back, or a tight end, depend on who's coming in for whatever formation. And then uh, I have a freedom uh, at the line of scrimmage in any particular defense. I have a number of checks I can make off an audible to at the line of scrimmage. And if I see something according to how the game is going, Coach Erickson gives me the freedom to go ahead and call whatever I play I want to at the line of scrimmage. That time, Broussard was carrying the ball. Ed Thomas, the middle linebacker for Houston, searched him out and brought him down. Right at the line of scrimmage, it's third down and five. Incidentally, the, uh, there's the final from today's blue-gray with the blue winning 22-21. Uh, the Yankees won again. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> the officials have changed that Washington State touchdown uh, numbers to this. Broussard, zero yards on the rush. Wood is given credit for a five-yard fumble advance for the touchdown. Timeout called with 10.20 to go in the first half at Washington State leading Houston 7-3. Yes, it's warm. But not suffocatingly so at all. There's a nice little breeze now sweeping across the stadium, and it's open in the corner, so you do get breeze down on the field. Third down and five, Washington State. Rosenbaugh. Has some time. Now he's got some room up the middle and takes off, running for his first down, and gets a bow. What a great block from Swinton. Swinton took down two Houston Cougars, and that really freed up Rosenbaugh for a big one. He took down two big cats. He didn't take down two of the small guys. He got, I believe, Lamar Lathan, number 46, is one of the people he took down. Uh, Alfred Oglesby might be the other man. You see him coming across. You right see? about in here now. It's Look happen. at him run, and right there he just lays low and waits for him takes him out that's a linebacker in Rosenbaugh and his first down at the 41 yard line up the middle goes Swinton pick up about three on the carry Dave Pakama who had been the starting center for Washington State most of the season Bad ankle, Paul Wolf, junior from Davis, California, 6'4", 270, handling the center job. The Washington State first half possession. Uh, their opportunities were pronounced, but they only got out of the whole thing uh, so far. Uh, one touchdown, and that came on a fluky play. Broussard back in at running back. A little wiggle back there. That frees Rosenbaugh on a roll, and he throws a bad pass. He had well set his tight end. 
all alone and just simply threw a bad pass. He had him open. Alton Montgomery was the man covering on the play, and he was behind, well sat, behind him deep and behind him trailing on the, on the coverage. So the ball was thrown low. These kind of uh, gambling defenses almost inevitably, though, are going to give the tight end some daylight. Well, they're going to give a tight end some daylight. What they're gambling with also is whether they're going to run or throw the ball, throw the football. When Houston Cougars are in their nickel, five backs, five defensive backs, Washington State is going to want to run the football. They're looking at third down and six right here. Rosenbaugh's pass is complete. Stalwart down the sidelines and goes all the way down inside the 30 to the 27. He just danced right along the chalk. Well, John Stallworth, if you're sitting at home watching this ball game, I checked out your cousin, and he's a little bit raw bone, just like you are. <laughs> but he's got some great moves, like John also, keeping his balance here on the sideline. Time out for the officials here. They've got a bunch of debris out on the field. I didn't know not know that Monsieur Debris came to the island this time of the year. Total yards, Washington State 174, Houston 54. But it's still close, 7-3. to three. Ball is at the 27-yard line. January 2nd, Oklahoma and Clemson square off to start our triple header. 1.30 Eastern time in the Florida Citrus Bowl. First down, Washington State. That is Broussard bouncing around, finding some daylight, running over one, gets down to the 21. And you got a penalty flag. Face mask, Houston. Steve Broussard grabbing his neck. I hope he's just trying to adjust his uh, shoulder pads here. And He's not in, it's not an injury. No, he's hurt a little bit because he's switching it around. You see him switch the ball around there. He switches it, and he's hit there. He's hitting his shoulder. His head's cocked around just a little bit. I you can't yeah. really tell. Alden Montgomery grabbed it and then stepped away and said, hey, wait a minute, I didn't do it. Well, too late. The flag was down. And it's first down Washington State at the Houston 15 with Rich Swinton in at running back for State. Rosenball rolls it out. Finds some room. Throws. Touchdown. Jason Hansen in for the extra point drive. It is good. At eight minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first half, Victor Wood gets his second touchdown. Washington State out to a 14 to three lead. And it's just good basic football. You're gonna see Rosenbach come out to the outside. His people are gonna be covered. Victor's gonna get in there. And he's going to be covered, and he's just going to drift to the inside. Now, he's hardworking. He's not the fastest guy. He's only a 4'6 runner. But right there, he just drifted into the open seam, caught his quarterback's eyes, and it's a touchdown, second of the ball game. And Rosenball was one step from crossing the line of scrimmage. Well, what do you think, Mr. Swan? Well, I think the defense is playing exactly the way you thought they were playing, but I'm very surprised that the Houston offense is shooting itself in the foot. They've had opportunities, but they've just failed to capitalize. Rosenbaugh is now 7 out of 12 for 127 yards and a touchdown. It's 14 to 3 right now. But Houston can explode. Hanson, long driving kick. Down to the two-yard line with James Dixon, who's had two good runbacks already, and he's got another one going. Grabbed by the hind leg at the 30 and goes to the 31. Coming up at halftime, the halftime show Christmas in Paradise featuring the Osmond boys, Alan Osmond's son. Not the brothers, these are the boys, and they're terrific. We saw them the other night. 
They range from what six up to thirteen. Up to thirteen of them. They're they're actually seven in the family, but the youngest I the sitting in his mother's lap and yeah, just too young to, <laughs> to crawl on stage. Still on a stroller. <laughs> Dixon, give you an idea how good he's been. Three times he's returned the ball for 141 yards. That's already an Aloha Bowl record. Aloha Bowl. Ware gets it off. Intercepted. Shouldn't have thrown it. He was hit just as he threw it. Sean Landrum intercepts it and runs it back to the 15-yard line. Well, old Moe's wearing uh, crimson and gray right now, isn't he? Sure is. Number 18, Sean Landrum, 5'10", 165 pounds, a sophomore. They were looking for a big game. You see right there the pressure being put on. The ball just flutters up in the air, and Sean's playing in his zone extremely well. He's in position to pick it off. Good tactical defense, just waiting for the opportunities. As one of those, Andre should have just eaten Oh, you see, he's rolling out, and he gets his pressure right here. Just, I don't think he could avoid it, that, Keith. It's just good backside pressure. All right, Washington State now with a big opportunity. The defense beginning to dominate this ball game. Broussard goes into the middle, and Steve is going to move from the 15 down to the 8. That's a 7-yard pickup. He had another big play in this season. He blocked the punt. Washington punt in the snow and cold at Pullman as the Cougars had to come from way back to win that game, 32-31, and get here to Hawaii. Second down and three. It's Swinton this time. And a penalty flag as Swinton picks up a yard. Keith, we, we had mentioned the improvement of Tim Rosenbaugh this season over last year and talking about the fact that his running game, holding against the offensive unit there, is one of the reasons why the team has improved so much. It's taken pressure, and, and this is a great situation right here to see how that pressure is taken off. They're close to the end zone. The running game is working well. His line's blocking well. He doesn't feel the pressure. Of, I've got to throw it and put it into the end zone for my Offense. team. Second down. Take a look on the right side of your screen. The hole at the offensive line, look, or the hole's right there on the offensive line. You see the little jersey being pulled up there? Yeah, that helps your running game a lot. So the ball is at the 18 now after the 10 yard penalty. Second down and about. Right at 15. Broussard is the running back. He goes in motion. Four wide outs, top of the picture now. Rosenball looks that way. Pressure right in his face, and he got rid of it in a hurry and threw the ball behind the intended receiver. But it was Johnny Jackson, the left corner, who blitzed on the play, and he was right in his face. Number 10, Johnny Jackson, also number 56, Glenn Montgomery. Tim read it well, got, got rid of the football. I should also mention, Keith, you know, after that holding penalty, that uh, Jim Eddy also told me, he said, looking at the film, he said, Washington State is one of the best holding football teams in America. And, you know, you teach your kids to hold. It's a professional move. And he was wondering if the officials were going to be able to pick it up and might call it this afternoon. They did that time. Third down, 15. Pressure backside. Rosenbaugh ducks away from Keith Jenkins. Takes off. Lathan after him. Lathan grabs him by the collar and drags him down at the 16-yard line. So that'll give Jason Hanson a chance here. You see, Keith, that's a prime reason why I'm not playing football today. There are linebackers who are now chasing the backs and catching up to them. Well, the two of these linebackers for Houston who came in as tight end. And uh, well, that, was that tells 80, you right now about the speed. Right, 85 Ed Thomas and 88 Reggie Burnett. Former tight ends when they went to the run and shoot. They moved to linebacker. The ball is at the 23. It is a 33-yard try. Straight-A student out of high school, Jason Hansen. Got it. At six minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first half, Washington State builds its lead to 17 to three in the Eagle Aloha Bowl in Hawaii. It's not too bad to be here in uh, Honolulu instead of Pullman right now. Yeah, or a few other cold places. But while up there. Yeah, but while I'm here, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to all of my family I've left at home and my friends back on the mainland. 
Line drive, bouncing around, bouncing around. Picked up at the four by James Dixon. He's already set an Eagle Aloha Bowl record of returning kicks, and again, he's got a good one out near the 30-yard line. The Washington State defense now, which is for the moment at least, taking control of this football game. Very much so. One thing the Houston Cougars attack has not lacked is field position. What they have lacked is the consistency and the ability to really threaten the Washington State defense. And I believe Andre Ware is just not coming out and reading that secondary very well. Weatherspoon is the running back. for a first down as he explodes to the 43 brought down by Ron Ricard Washington State continuing to play the nickel defense number 20 Jason Phillips a wide receiver we've talked to you about told talk to you about see right there he's getting a pretty good block downfield arm comes out a little bit grabs that leg but that's okay he's allowed We're back throwing on first down hits his man on the sideline pass good Brian Williams Sophomore from Longview, Texas, getting his first catch of the day and a pickup of about nine yards. Keith, two very crisp plays right in a row, back to back. We haven't seen Houston executing right. as crisply as on those last two plays. Well, Jack Party says, uh, despite the fact that you might want to categorize the run and shoot as uh, sort of playground football, it's not. It's very precise. It, it's timing. You've got the timing. Second and short. First, here comes Phillips. He sets up the throw. He's got a man wide open all by himself. The fat man Smith is thrown down at the four-yard line. They go deep into the playbook for that one. First, first down of the day, passing for Houston. Well, you take a look at play right here. They ran the reverse earlier. He took, he's thrown the ball a few times. He just sets up, lost it in the air. Doesn't try and make it the perfect pass. He just gets it there. And then Paul Smith is there to hang on to it, but he better tuck that ball away. Sean Landrum made the touchdown saving tackle. Houston first down and goal from the Washington State four. Now let's see if they give Chuck Weatherspoon some work here. Nope. Pass. To about the one. The pass is caught by Dixon. Well, it was it was third and short. Earlier in the first quarter, they were going for it. They went through the air. They didn't use Weatherspoon, didn't run the football. Philosophy hasn't changed, although they're knocking at the door. Second and goal from the one. Time remaining, five minutes. First half. Timeout called by the referee for a moment. John Law is something on the sideline. No, the band him. is playing. He's trying to call right. plays, and the band is over there playing right in his ear. <laughs> Who's band? Oh, it's a pep band of some kind. I guess one of the bands involved in the halftime show was not the Houston band. <laughs> what? Bart Edeman down there with a stick if it was the oh, Houston yeah. band. <laughs> now they let him go. I think that's a good call. Very it's the right thing to do. Second and goal from the Washington State one, Weatherspoon. Touchdown, Houston. in for the extra point. Steve Spillman puts it down. Hits the upright. Hooked it. Hit the left upright and fell away. But they're back in the hunt. Washington State 17 to 9. Take another look at it. 
It's just going to go right to his left and dead center at the uprights, he, and it's no good. He stood out there for a week and tried to do that. He couldn't do it. Next time, I'm sure they'll go for two. Houston moving 70 yards in a hurry for their touchdown. While we're waiting for the kickoff, let's pause five seconds so our local stations can tell you who they are. Mike Freshman out of South Houston, only 5'9", 160, but he's got a big leg and he's going to kick it off. The deep people will be Victor Wood, 13, right there, and Ed Tingstad, number 11. Victor Wood having a big day. Two touchdowns. One of them, look what I found. <laughs> Looks like that surprise present underneath this Christmas tree. Good high hanging tree. Wood, Victor at the two of the three. Looks for the sidelines and gets up across the 20 to about the 25. A moment now with Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, as we watch Houston on this next defensive series, their defensive coordinator, Jim Eddy, said he's only had one problem with what they're doing so far. They've tried to run a lot of line stunts to combat some of Washington's size on their offensive line, but in running those line stunts, they have lost contain on the quarterback, Tim Rosenbaugh. That's what Jim Eddy was preaching during this last bit of uh, time off when Houston's offense was on the field, contain the quarterback. Well, preaching and doing are two different things. Let's see if they can. Rosenball gives the ball away. This is Broussard bouncing to the outside and running into traffic and running into a solid tackle from uh, Callaway. The Cedric Callaway, who is a junior out of Philadelphia, Mississippi. In the first 16 minutes and 20 seconds of this ball game, we had three points. The last eight minutes, we've had 23 points. Eight minutes is a long time and a lot of opportunities for either one of these football teams on offense. Clock running at 4.20 to go in the first half. Second down, 13. Swinton out of the backfield goes in motion. Burnett steps up, blitz coming offside there. Houston Cougars jump too soon. Keith Jenkins, oh, Keith, he was wound up and coming, and he just got a step too soon. I'm trying to get that pressure on. But the call is on Washington State. Somebody along the interior line moved. And the penalty flag goes the other way. Maybe Keith saw something we didn't. Somebody along the offensive front wiggled a little bit. And he okay. took off. Second down. Penalties so far. Washington State six for 51 yards. Houston five for 30 yards. So Washington State's going the wrong way right now. They're backed up on the 17. A little draw here, and it is uh, Rich Swinton, the sophomore, finding his way to about the 24. Houston blitzing that time on the play. Throughout the season, the Washington State team has said, please blitz us. They like for you to blitz them because they feel they can take advantage of it. One of the reasons that one of the causes of UCLA's demise, that great upset, was that they came out and tried to blitz them, and they picked it up and took advantage of it. That time, that draw picked up uh, almost eight, nine yards, made it third and ten. Third and eleven. Rosenball's pass, good for the first down. Up across the 35 to the 36. Oh, well, he had time, and he hit Wimberley right on the number. Michael is a senior from Price, a senior from Dallas for Houston. And they're coming up to the line. It's going to be Houston's one to that side to pick him up in man coverage but in the disguise so he gets his first down throws on play action at the 29 yard line of houston william pelham getting the ball for the first time today big play william pelham just outran him he is not keith a real fast receiver they say he caught only in about 4.7 but outside of Tim Stallworth, who they feel is their best receiver, who's a tremendous athlete, the receivers for Washington State are considered to be a group of hard workers, overachievers. They just come out, they execute, try and play the best football they can and not make mistakes, and then showing up, they're playing very good here. 
First down at the Houston 29. The ball is handed to Steve Broussard. Look at him lead his way through traffic. He's got a first down around the 28. Brought down by Johnny Norwood, a senior from Beaumont, Texas. He's got a low center of gravity, too, and uh, like Weatherspoon, he can really move it. So you can. You see there the Washington State School records that were set this year by the offensive unit. Consistency, balanced attack, and they self-scout themselves. They analyze their own team to see if they're showing any tendencies, and then they correct it. Rolls the ball, rolls it out, throws it down the middle. Lucky to get that one back. Bad pass. If he lofted it, he's got a touchdown because he had Wilson in the end zone by himself. And he had a shot, but number four, Johnny Norwood, was coming across. I have a feeling, Keith, that if that ball wasn't tipped away, he might have picked it up. He had a bead on it just about five yards further downfield. Easy to set up here, though, it's a bad catch, right? Yeah. He's a 280-pounder <laughs> trying to tear your head off. Second down and ten. There goes Broussard. He may have a first down. He is a tough customer. He's getting pretty close to 100 yards, isn't he? 17 carries, 88 yards here in the first half with two minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first half. Washington State leading 17 to 9. Washington State looking at the nickel package. That's Jim Eddy. Defensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars. He's signaling in those defensive plays, the alignment, hoping this guy is getting right. He's got five backs in there looking for the pass. It's first down and goal inside the three for Washington State. Rosenball stands up, whips it, caught by Stallworth. Stallworth is going to be thrown down for a loss short of the five yard line, and there's a penalty flag, and you might, you might have a face mask for that because everybody was clutching and grabbing. And you could uh, could have had an inadvertent, and that's what you've got. Sure. So they'll be back just about where they started. First and goal, just inside the three. Washington State seems to have found the Chuck Keith. A little late in the, third, in the second quarter. Minute 35 to go in the first half. And he's trying to cash it in before the halftime. Broussard takes off, cuts it. Nope, not going to get it to him. He bounced before he hit the goal line. Well, pinball action that time. Before he got to the end zone, the officials decided his knee came down first. Uh, somebody's on the sideline not happy about that call. I think it was his <laughs> head that came down first. He took a pretty good lick. It's that close. Second and goal. Rosenball. Touchdown. Why not? When you look at that offensive line with Paul Wolf at center, watch the surge. They just fire out into the end zone. They cross it. That's an easy touchdown for a quarterback. Again, Paul Wolf at center is 6'4", 270. He's a junior. Mike Utley is one guard. The, everybody's All-American at 6'6", 290, a senior. And Jim Mahalichuk, 6'3", 268, a senior, is the other guard. The apex of that wedge. Hanson for the extra point. the heart and the clock shows 53 seconds to play in the first half and Washington State moves out to a 24 to 9 lead to amplify how this momentum has swung based on the defensive play by Washington State their offense in their last four possessions have produced three touchdowns and a field goal and to punctuate how they've done it, 
with great balance. They've rushed for seven first downs. They've passed for seven first downs. And they've achieved two by penalty. And they're playing their kind of football. But don't get yourself lulled into a state of false security. <laughs> 53 seconds is more than enough time for the Houston Cougars to get some points on the board. Hanson will kick it off. Last time he kicked it. Oh, driving kick, bouncing it down the field. James Dixon is the man in the middle for the Houston Cougars with Weatherspoon and Smith on each side of him. Again, it's a low driving kick. It's handled by Weatherspoon. Chuck does everything. He plays on special teams. He has 11 unassisted tackles, five fumble recovers, returns, kicks. He's a busy fellow, a good football player. He's brought down short of the 30. They'll mark him around the 28-yard line. Make it the 29. And there are the drives, Keith, you were talking about. The plays, six yards, 55 a minute, 44 for the scores, and the touchdown drives. Eight plays, 10 plays, covering the distance of the field. Three minutes and 56 seconds, the longest for the touchdown drive, and that's not a long time. Andre Ware brings him up now, five out of 16, 33 yards. Andre's been picked off twice. Sets up the throw. Gets it off just as he is hit, and the pass is no good. And the big guy who pounded in there to get a piece of him was Mark Ledbetter, number 91. Time remaining, 40 seconds in the first half. And at halftime, Christmas in Paradise, the show. Always a good one. Very pretty. Second and ten for the Houston Cougars. Incomplete. Where threw it behind the intended receiver, Kimball Anders. David Dacus, a senior from Kingsville. Now, we've not seen him today. We may see him unless Andre finds his touch. And he seemed to have found himself comfortable with this system. David Dacus, number 13, is a smart player and quite capable of coming in and leading the Houston team. Where gets it off. Sideline pattern. Thrown a little bit high. Goes incomplete. Patrick Cooper could not reel it in. Patrick among the taller of the receivers for Houston at 6'2". Now they'll have to punt it with 29 seconds. There's number 13, David Dacus. He's a good one. He is a senior. And probably somewhere in his dreams, he's thought about coming in this ball game when the team is behind and leading the victory in his last game as a Houston Cougar. Simon Rodriguez will punt it, and Victor Wood is back to return it. Dropped it, no pressure. Not a very good kick, should get a roll and does, and Victor Wood's gonna let it roll. He ain't gonna mess with that thing, because it's coming down the field with uh, rolling around, bouncing around, and the Houston Cougars finally kill it down around the two-yard line. I'm not sure about that decision. Now, if he had made the catch of that ball, it'd be up around the 28, 29-yard line. It goes as a 70-yard punt, but it was a gimme. I, I think he just couldn't give up, Keith. The ball was like, uh, was very low and he couldn't come up fast enough to make the catch. But his timing was also thrown off. With a 15-point lead. I think I would. Watch the splits of this offensive line. I think they'll be shoulder to shoulder, they toe are. to toe. They've got their shoelaces tied to each other. <laughs> That'll run it out. So the first half is over in the Eagle Aloha Bowl from Hawaii. And Washington State Cougars are leading the Houston Cougars by a score of 24 to 9. Keith, despite a statistically dreadful first half, uh, Houston quarterback Andre Ware is the man for the Cougars in the second half. I talked to Houston receivers coach Ron Calcagney, also a great quarterback himself in Arkansas. He said, we have all the face in the, in the world, and Andre, he just lost his composure a little bit. We have no thoughts about using David Dacus. We're going to go with Ware all the way in the second half, and hopefully he'll do the kind of things that led them to the Eagle Aloha Bowl in the first place. All right, Michael. Ron Calcagney. Remember him as quarterback at Arkansas. Tony Fitzpatrick played at Miami and then played with the uh, Houston Gamblers and the Houston Oilers also on that coaching staff. Of course, John Jenkins is the man that calls all the plays and uh, runs the run and shoot. Johnny Robertson will kick it off for Houston now. Washington State will have the ball first as we start the second half with the Houston Cougars having won the opening toss and taking the ball. Victor Wood, who's having a big day, 
is the man they want to return it. Ed Kingstad is back there with him. Ed, the bigger of the two. Here's the bouncing kickoff, and on the run, Victor Woods up the sidelines. Out across the 20 to about the 28-yard line. Here are the halftime steps. As you were saying, Keith, 46 plays for Washington State University, 28 for Houston. Turnovers, very minimal for the kind of ball games we have in there, but the yards are just stacking up for WSU as they continue to possess the football and put points on the scoreboard. I believe the last four possessions all ended up in scores in the end of the first half. In that second quarter alone, it was 2-1 to one in plays for Washington State, 3-1 to one first downs. 2-1 to one in time, so they were dominant in the second quarter. Rosenthal hands it away on the first snap to start the second half to Steve Broussard. And Broussard's going to lose a yard and a half or two on the first carry. Brought down by number 96, Alfred Oglesby. There you see the stats for Washington State, their offensive leaders, Rosenbaugh. Doing a good job, 10 for 17. That's consistent. Russ and Broussard has been a real big difference in this ball game, coming up with some tremendous plays, allowing them to control and possess the football on offense. Second down and 12 for Washington State. Back to pass with a quick pop, caught by Victor Woods. Wood uh, will have a first down, but the referee, John Laurie, has thrown a flag. That will bring it back, folks. It's holding. I do believe that the defensive coordinator for Houston, Eddie, may have had a talk with those officials at halftime saying we have a player who's injured down on the field. Salton Montgomery. That you've got to watch the offensive line for Washington State. They hold and they do it extremely well. There's Eddie. He doesn't have access to the officials at halftime, does he? Does he? Oh. We're coming out just casually walking by. Saying hello, screaming, oh, he screaming at the guys. Do that? No, <laughs> neither would you or I, would we? <laughs> Montgomery's up walking around. I think he's going to be okay. He's headed towards the sideline. See, there's the that's a second quarter, and it belongs totally to Washington State. All right, the big holding call backs them up all the way to the 17-yard line. They've got to go almost to the 39 to get their first down. So they need about 22 yards. On second down, Rosenthal pressured. Burnett's got him. Reggie Burnett came loose on the left side. Nobody touched him. Nobody saw him. And the big sophomore from Rayville, Louisiana, got his man. And the man coverage down the field. Number two, Tim Stallworth was double teamed. Rosenbaugh came out and he looked. Should have seen that was man-to-man -man coverage and dumped that ball up very quickly. But there wasn't anybody to dump it to. He just should have gotten rid of the football. We didn't call Burnett's name, but one time, I don't think, in the first half, but he is a very good, quick linebacker. He get us, gets a solo on that play. Now it's third down and very long. Rich Swinton is in there at the running back position. Again, the pressure coming from the outside. The pass is away. Deep down field and too long. Running under it, Tim Stolberg. But he was about three strides short of the ball. Keith Jenkins putting the heat on Rosenball. And now Washington State got to punt the ball away. Blitz is back-to-back -back by the Houston Cougars. Oh, they're going to blitz. You know they're going to blitz now in this third quarter. They're going to try and get something happening real fast, taking chances this far back in, their, in uh, Washington State's territory. You got 10 of them. Ten red shirts up on the line. They're going after Rob Myers, who's going to have to hit this one right about his goal line. They don't penetrate, and Myers gets it out, and it's a pretty good kick. He's kicked well today. Callaway backs up, goes inside his 40, back to about the 36, and he is gang tackled at the 40, and a penalty flag is thrown. So it's a 52-yard punt by Myers out of the end zone. And let's see about the penalty. Here's your call. Flipping. Houston. So Washington State didn't exactly shine in their first possession, and now uh, the Houston Cougars make a mistake themselves. And we'll lose some yardage. We'll tack that on to that 52-yarder, and uh, that's a bunch. 
uh, you know, when you're rushing, you just tip people to you. They're trying to put pressure on the on the punt. <laughs> to get a return, you've got to get those people all the way back, and that offensive charge is the punting team is going to have an advantage. You're always in a position to clip and block some, someone from behind. you just got to control yourself and figure the punt return man will be okay on his own. He'll either fair catch it or get out of bounds and protect himself. So the penalty moves it from the 40 back to the 25, and that's where Houston goes to work, trailing 24 to 9 here in the third quarter. Andre Ware, 5 out of 19 for 33 yards in that first half. Now he looks right, throws left. Oh, my goodness, it's almost intercepted. Bob O'Neill, number 41, the linebacker, stepped in between James Dixon and the pass and almost had six points. Let's take a good look at this. He's going to roll halfway to his right, and he's going to throw back across the field. Now, look at the receivers right there, James Dixon. But he's got a linebacker, O'Neal, just zero in on him. Just misses that football. <laughs> Second down and ten. A rare opportunity. Where it looks right, looks back down the middle, throws right, throws it in the crowd. Incomplete. Well, that conservative attitude by the Washington State defense, their scheme was to be conservative, keep them in front of them, don't give them anything big. So far, it's been a very good defensive game plan. And I think they're confusing Andre Weir because they're disguising that coverage just a bit, Keith. He's not picking up very quickly on that three-deep zone and the coverage underneath, just who is responsible for whom. He had a receiver, number five, Brian Williams, wide open on the other side, but he didn't read his side and come back to him. He's got to look downfield. He's got to scan the whole secondary. It is now third and ten. <laughs> Little pop thrown out here to the left side to Patrick Cooper. Cooper is not going anywhere. He's down just about the line of scrimmage. Tactical defense, Keith. Tactical defense overcame what this Houston offense wanted to do just by having the people in the right place at the right time. They didn't get an overwhelming amount of pressure. They just had the coverage at the right place at the right time, forcing bad reads by Andre Ware, and they're punting the football again. It's an easy game if you got the right people in the right place at the right time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Rodriguez to punt it. Gets it out of there. Doesn't have a whole lot of carry. At the 40, fair catch, Victor Wood. So Washington State, after a 35-yard punt, have the football and very good field position. 12-24 to go, third quarter. Okay, Aloha Lani, the beautiful Hawaiian dancer. Make it the 41 yard line now for Washington State. Their football first down. And their defensive unit took control of this ball game in that second quarter, and uh, they still have it. Rosenbaugh turns and gives to Broussard. And Steve will have about three as he gets to the 44 yard line. They're in a position now, uh, 20, where they can just literally pound on it, beat on uh, the Houston defensive people a little bit. And it is warm on that artificial surface. Absolutely. And I said this is not going to be one of those games where you stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe, but when you've got people like Mike Upley and Chris Geico in your offensive line, you can have somewhat of a luxury. You've got a lead. You use your strength and go right behind it. Swinton steps in, carries the ball here from Cougar, gets across the 45, keeps on fighting, and gets it up to about the 48-yard line. When you're in there thrashing and, and struggling that much, oftentimes you have a pretty good chance to lose the ball. When Broussard came out, he was a little gimpy with his right foot, and right now, uh, Lamar Latham, number 46, getting up a little gingerly after the collision. Alton Montgomery, incidentally, who was taken up a moment ago for Houston, is back in the game. He's all right. But you're going to have to play a lot of people now to the end of the ball game, no question. It'll be third down and two for Washington State. They stay with the running game. Swinton bouncing outside, gets to midfield, over midfield, close to his first down. 
afloat. It's Broussard, excuse me, back in there, not Swift. Oh, the official's got his foot right on that He's first right on down that marker. marker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the chains on the other side of the field, they're going to have to bring it in. While they're measuring, uh, Jack Frio, who was the basketball coach for so many good years at Washington State, close to 40 years up there at uh, Pullman. Jack here today with his family, grandsons and his son, Wally, and 90, and as frisky as a young colt. Great to know Jack's about and visiting with us. We lost a great uh, old friend, Ducky Drake, on Friday, who was the trainer at uh, UCLA for so many years, the track coach, a track star, the Ducky Drake Stadium named for him at UCLA. Heart attack, and he's gone. Looks, they look like they're going to go. On fourth and very short now, behind that big offensive front, here comes a considered risk in the ball game. Swinton is the running back. But I would imagine here that you'll see Rosenbaugh just grab on to the coattail of Big Wolf and go up the middle with it. And I don't know if he made it. The Houston Cougars stacked him. The linebackers got in there, put the pads to him, and I don't think he made it. It's going to be close. Houston beat Washington State to the surge. The defensive people, uh, the big guys went low. The backers stepped in and slammed the door. On the course of the year, as you see Rosenbaugh trying to go behind that big line, the Washington State team was 8 for 12 on fourth down attempts. They didn't make it. All right, here is a moment of the ball game where old momentum can change his colors so quick. If these Houston Cougars can now stick it in the end zone off this gamble, you might have a different horse running in the race. A big, big win for that defensive unit because they are really overmatched when it comes just to pure strength and size on the, on the line of scrimmage. They absolutely beat Washington State at the line of scrimmage that time and stuffed the fourth down try. Off on the snap. All right, Andre Ware, who's only 6 of 22 for 33 yards, rolls it out, pumps it, throws it deep. Going for Fox! Oh, me. I had a heart attack. Up, don't you? I had a heart attack. <laughs> Jason Phillips has caught 108 passes on the year. Mm. He will remember this. He is a senior. This is the last football game he has a chance to play with these people, with his team. He is wide open. This has six points written all over it. This is a part of the dream he had last night when he went to bed, and that was a part of the nightmare. It is second and ten. Weatherspoon in the backfield. <laughs> Phillips out there wide again. Trips to the top. Cook is almost penetrate. Back off. And Weatherspoon can't go anywhere as Tueno Alitate from Union City, California puts the hit on him. Houston went for big on that first play and he should have had it keep. Yep, it was there. As a result, as a result of that second down, the great defense play by the Washington State team. Now they look at the third and long. Third and nine. Where? Looking at Phillips again, but uh, they missed connections on that because uh, Jason turned inside and the ball was thrown outside. And once again, the Washington State defensive people do their job. The receiver did not get the right read, Pete. He's nope. trying to make up his mind 15, 20 yards downfield, whether it go to the outside or go deep. And where? was focused just on one area downfield. One of the things that, one of the things I remember about the uh, Western Street offense when Kelly ran it, his head was always on the field of reading. I've yet to see Andre read that whole second. Yeah, and the receiver's got to make a read, too. Both, both have to make the right That's read. Right. That's right. All right, here's the punt by uh, Simon. Oh, it's a good one. It's right on the 10 and bounces out of bounds. So he aims it for the coffin corner and gets it right on the 10. It's 10-10 ten, ten to go in the third quarter of play. Well, that's the Houston Cougar 
cheerleaders and band, and they're doing everything they can. I mean, they are working hard, setting up the sunshine. Right now, Washington State first down, leading in the ball game, 24 to 9. Ball at their own 10. Rosenball rolls out, buys a little time. Now his pass is away to Wellsant, the tight end. And Wellsant is out of bounds at the 49-yard line, first down. 39-yard pickup. Ed Thomas was the man that saved a big play. Rosenball threw a knuckleball, got away with it. Wellsant was so open. Well, he, the reason he got great protection, he was going to get a rush from the outside, and he just got a tremendous block, forcing all the pursuit, Keith, all the outside pressure back to the inside, gave him the whole right side to see with no one in front of him. Alton Montgomery has had to leave the game again. He's playing now what, what appears to be a strained left ankle. He's hobbling on it. Kevin Tuggle comes in, senior from Austin for Houston. And this is Steve Broussard from uh, over the left side. He's got a couple of yards. Tomorrow, a fantastic journey back into 1988 with Ted Koppel. News from Earth, messages from an incredible group of world figures. An electronic time capsule to share with generations to come. The Koppel Report. Tomorrow at 10, 9 Eastern. 10 Eastern, 9 Central, and Mountain Time. Old pal, Ted Cup. Keith, I think it's very, very smart of Washington State to start running the football, not just because they have the lead, but because of the fatigue factor that they don't want to be a factor in this ballgame. Rosenbaugh wants to throw, does throw, and he almost throws it right into the hand, did throw it into the hands of Derek Price, but Derek couldn't handle it. Underneath, though, he had Swinton available. Just didn't see him. But the offensively, Keith, if they can continue to run and work the ball downfield, not make mistakes, they're not going to be tired in the fourth quarter. No matter what Houston does, they will be able to answer the call offensively and defensively. Right now, they're looking at third down and eight. The ball at the Houston 49-yard line. And they're sitting on a 15-point lead. It's not big with an offensive explosion. It's a Yet. Flags. Rosenbaugh's got a problem. Got to throw it away, and he does. Now let's see about these flags. That might be a hole. Nope. Going against the Cougars, though. Eight minutes and 59 seconds. Looking at the roster of Washington State, they'll have to go to the punt team now. There are a lot of Californians. I think 44 Californians on the roster. And I think there's a point to be made about that, and I'll do it the next time they have the football. Right now, the Houston Cougars needing some points at 8.59 to go in the third quarter. Rob Myers in the punt, 49, 52, 53 yards, his punt so far today. And it's Callaway, Cedric Callaway, the junior out of Philadelphia, Mississippi, waiting for it. There's no pressure. Another good punt by Myers. Oh, it's in the end zone. So it'll come back to the 20 for the Houston Cougars. That was a 48-yard. So it's a fair day for Mr. Myers. His shortest punt. 48 yards. Sandy Beach, Otomahu. Great place for a boogie board. Well, Mauna Kea on the big island at 13,000 plus feet. Boogie board works very well there, too. A lot of ways to entertain yourself. Speaking of entertaining, Robert Greasy, his sons are skiing over in Colorado, and I understand they just got snow and snow and snow. Bob will be back with us for the Rose Bowl game on January 2nd. Now, don't break a leg, will you? <laughs> They'll wheel him in if he does. First down for Houston. Way back. Pumps it. Comes back the other way. Gets Phillips. Gets a block on the corner and gets it up to the 30 for a first down. That would work. That's a little quick screen to the outside. Phillips and Nixon combined for 210 catches for the Houston Cougars over the season. 2,547 yards. And used something like 26 touchdowns. But today, they have four catches for 27 yards. First down from the 31. Where's pass underneath? Kimball Anders. He's back down at the line of 
scrimmage, and that's a good defensive play from the nickelback Ron Ricard, a sophomore from Burbank, California. Let's pause right here, five seconds, so our local stations can identify themselves. We wish you a happy holiday. Houston going to a no huddle offense now, second down and ten, trailing. Defense took over. The offense produced the points, and they've controlled the ball game pretty much since that time. And Andre Ware is having a hard time with the way the Cougars are playing the defense. They're disguising themselves well. They're playing conservatively. They're playing a zone. They're keeping everything in front of them. And a couple of times when Houston's had a chance to stick at the end zone, had people wide open just a few minutes ago, Jason Phillips struck one. Jason Phillips struck one. Ware has been throwing them, you know, a bit all over the field. He has not been very accurate, and I think it may be the immaturity. He's a young man, very well spoken, but this is his first ball game. Oh, here's another one. He had Williams going down the middle, wide open, and Williams with that great speed, the sophomore from Longview, and he could not reach it. And so another opportunity goes a glimmering for Houston. Dropped balls, just barely missed passes. Everything seems to be a step off, Keith. No one seems to be on the same page. You talk about rhythm, you talk about the timing of the passing attack. They don't have it. They've got two left legs out there. That's well said. Simon Rodriguez in the punt. Two, four, this is number seven. Low line drive, got a little bit of room here if he catches it. Victor Wood pulls it in, here he comes. Got some daylight. Corky Gore ran him down, and Victor Wood is having a big day. He scored two touchdowns. It's a line drive punt. Whenever you get a line drive punt, no matter how far you have to back up, you've got room to run, and he didn't waste any time turning on the Jets. He picks up blocks along the sideline. His head is up. He's reading them well, and he gives his Cougars, the Washington State version, great field position. 36-yard line of Houston, 47-yard punt, 40-yard return. Net seven yards. This is Broussard. And he's just about at the line of scrimmage on that carry. Clock rolling along now at 7.20. Washington State, now Keith seemingly playing very relaxed, confident football. A cushion. Pressure's up the middle. Rosenblatt's pass is down the middle, and it's incomplete. And the intended receiver, uh, Elmer Thomas, begging his case down there with the back judge saying, come on, he's a hanging on to me. Derek well, Price defending. I'll tell you one thing. If you paint a couple of lines on his back, you might you can call him a ladder because <laughs> Derek Price just climbed right up his back like he was going to paint the sky. All you receivers are the same. <laughs> well, he did, Keith. I can't help it. <laughs> he was trying to get turned around to see where the ball was to make a play for it. Had his hands on his shoulders and looked like he was going to put a foot up on his rear end and just climb right up to the top. Well, they're having a hard time, you know. That'd do a little claw and scratch. <laughs> Third down. Still about ten. Those are the running back. Oh, it was Lathan, untouched from the bottom of the picture. He just came whistling in. That is the fifth time that the Houston Cougars have sacked Tim Rosenball. One time they deflated him and he had to come out of the game. I thought that was Larry Holmes hitting uh, <laughs> hitting Joe Frazier that time. Well, nobody picked him up. I mean, he was <laughs> he just, just He just lifted him right up and put him down to the ground. Myers is back in to punt again. The offensive on both sides uh, still here in this third quarter. He punches one high, twisting punt that's angled for the corner and gets it. He knocked it out over there at the 13-yard line. That's a very good punt. So he's gone 53, 49, 52, 48. That's only 31 yards, but it's efficient. That's what he wanted him to do. He pins Houston back a bit. On January 2nd, 
ABC Sports offers the 100th Tournament of Roses Parade. 60 floats, 22 marching bands, 250 equestrians. Jim McKay, Joan London, and Tim McCarver will cover it for you at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> Users of nasal sprays invariably encounter the same problem. Warm voice. Sprays that roll back in their throat or drip out of their nose. To avoid this, they'll do just about anything. But this man has Sinex Ultrafine Mist. Its medicine doesn't roll back or drip out. It goes up and stays up, and that makes it better. So try Sinex Ultrafine Mist. It goes up and stays up. From Vicks, of course. David Dacus is in at quarterback now, a senior from Kingsville, Texas. He was the starting quarterback at the start of the season, and you can see there, very successful. So they have made a change at quarterback, trying to find something that works for them. Dacus shoots one down the middle. It's low, short, and incomplete intended for James Dixon. Can't expect him really, though, to come flying off the bench and be terribly effective. Got to give him one series to get his feel. Just get the timing down. Lack, see what's happening out there, get into the flow, the pace of the game. But maybe he can bring a sense of rhythm. Maybe he can put some timing into this offense. He's also the only guy on the field with black shoes. Very observant team. Second down and ten. End it off. Weatherspoon pops out of there. Good tough run by Chuck Weatherspoon for a first down out at the 27 yard line. Chuck is just the recipient of real fine blocking that time. Kept his head up. Going Spoon. without the huddle. Spoon, that's his nickname. They got they have room for Weatherspoon all the way across the back, but he just prefers Spoon. If he keeps playing like this, he can have anything he wants. Davis gets heat from the backside, runs away from it. Now he's got a problem down on the 25-yard line. Mark Ledbetter was the man pursuing him at the outset. Never did quit. Just kept on hammering after him. And finally, after being blocked, got up and made the tackle. It was a great job, Keith, of an offensive line picking up the blocking assignment. All right? There's, a, there's pressure coming in from the outside. The pressure's going to come in here. Watch the center as he loops back to make that block on the man on the outside. See, right there, he reads it. Boom. He hits him, gives him the time. At this point, David ought to throw the football away because he got the extra time he needed. Second down and 13 to the sideline to Cooper. And Cooper's grabbed and brought down at about the 35. And that leaves them three yards short of their first down. That's a good read. That's a good read. You see the second half possessions of Houston right there. There's the starts, the number of plays, but each time at the end, the results, punt, punt, punt. Last time I checked, you didn't get any points for punting the football. Not in this game. Third and about three. <laughs> Four-man defensive front, Washington State. O'Neill linebacker's up on the line, but he'll pick up here and drop off. Up the middle goes Weatherspoon. And Chuck has the first down up at the 46. So the Houston Cougars now have moved from their 13 to their 46. David walking up to that line of scrimmage, gets behind William Gant. Gant was talking to him a little bit, I think letting him know what the lineman was. He turned around, said something to the running back, called the play, handed it off, and it was a big game. First down. Vegas pumps it, puts it up, and he's got a man. We have a picture of David on the sideline when in the first half when we talked about he probably dreamed Kate coming into this ball game, taking over if it were necessary to bring his team back. That was his first series behind the center. It's a touchdown. 53 yards. And the extra point try now coming. It looks like two. 
We had missed an extra point before. I think they just like to get back to one they lost. Yep. Weatherspoon, Vegas, a little pop, no good. So at four minutes and 25 seconds to play in the third quarter, the Houston Cougars go 53 yards for a touchdown, make it a nine-point game now. Washington State leading 24 to 15. We'll take another look at the touchdown play. David comes in, does a great job. Now watch his head. He looks, he's reading, he pumps fake, draws the coverage up, and he lets it fly. Now watch the ball, it floats in. The receiver is well behind that coverage. Well executed. He knew what he was going against in that defensive secondary and had the right play called against it. Smart football, very good execution. But the execution by the Washington State defense uh, simply went away from what uh, their game plan was, and that was to keep everything in front of them. Well, they were trying to do that, but what happened was the safety back there, as you saw, playing center field, he didn't get deep enough. He's looking, thinking he sh should come up and make a play, but he's deep into the outside. He just couldn't cover the territory fast enough. All right, Mike Adams will kick it off now. Washington State's offense has been quiet in the third quarter. Victor Wood and Ed Tingstad are the deep people. This maybe ain't over. No, it's not over. I, I did notice something else about that pass game. When Andre throws a ball, you can hang your wash on it. It's a yep. line. Yep. David threw it. It floated through the air. Yep. There was a lot of hang time. You know, Jack Marty has been known to onside kicking when you least expect it to. I see some fidgety people up front. I think maybe they expect it. returning kicks today Dixon and Wood have been spectacular he's up to the 43 yard line the Rose Bowl January 2nd Michigan Wolverines and the Southern California Trojans we'll have it at 445 Eastern time following the Florida Citrus Bowl it'll be game number 75 Michigan winning the Big Ten Southern California the Pac-10 little more spirit on the uh, Houston side now, Washington State moving the football as Steve Broussard runs it right up the pipe and picks up about four yards. He's right around 100 now, getting close to it. He's got 100 exactly on 23 carries. Second down and six. Formation call from the sideline. Play is brought in. This is Broussard going to the outside. Try to make his cut. Good defense by Houston. Reggie Burnett didn't let him get outside. Forced him back in. When he made his cut, he lost his momentum. It'll be third down and about three and a half. Reggie Burnett converted tight end. When Jack Pardee came to Houston with the run and shoot offense, he took all the tight ends since he knew he wasn't going to use them at that position. Tried them all at the super back position. That's that single back spot. And those who could play, he would keep there. But the rest of them opted to try elsewhere. And two of them became linebackers. On third down, Rosenball. A little quick pop. Good to stall with. Good for a first down. He's inside the 40. He tiptoed all the way down to the 36 of Houston. Well, I don't believe that Jack in any sense ever thought any of those tight ends were going to wind up uh, running back. I think that was just... Uh, uh, ego satisfaction because <laughs> he knew they were going to make linebackers out of well, may, may, Maybe Jack knew it when he, after he analyzed the talent, but you think in any program, if you're going to have one person in that backfield, if you have a tight end who's not bulky and just a pure blocker, he can come in, he's going to catch the ball well for you out of the backfield. On first down, there's a little quick pop and it's incomplete. Ooh. Houston's been blitzing, trying to get more pressure of the stunts in there, so now Rosenbaugh's gone back to the quick passes. He one threw, step drops. He threw that to Victor Wood. The only problem Victor had with that one was Ed Thomas arrived. 215 pounds of angry Ed Thomas arrived at the same time. <laughs> it is second down and 10. The ball at the Houston 36-yard line with two minutes and 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. 
big drive here for the Houston defensive unit. They really need to stop Washington State right now and maintain that momentum. Deep drop this time by Rosenball. A lot of time. Line giving him all day long. Nobody to throw it. Now he finds somebody, Broussard. And Broussard gets it to about the 25, and that will be a first down. Lamar Lathan, outside linebacker, number 46, responsible for covering Broussard. He stayed with him. He was on him. But then when Rosenbaugh started rolling to his side, he left his man. As if he was going to go in to make the tackle, stopped, realized that he had left his man uncovered, and Steve Broussard makes the catch. First down by a yard. Rich Swinton in the backfield, rotating those uh, running backs. Trying to keep the pressure on a hot day. Now he steps up into a slot. Rosenball back to pass, looks downfield, looks for Pelham, gets his pass away. Wood is there, Victor Wood, down to the eight-yard line. I'll tell you right now, with 2.15 to play in the third quarter, Victor Wood is the prime candidate for MVP, isn't he? Bet, bet the house on it, Keith. That Rosenbaugh came up and audible. He changed the play at the line of scrimmage. He came up, saw the coverage, saw the mismatch, number 88, an outside backer on, on Victor Wood, and called the play. Well, you don't figure a backer's going to cover Wood, do you? Not at all, even if he's a converted tight end. Broussard back into the backfield for Washington State now. First down and goal, the ball at the eight. For the white-shirted Cougars from the Northwest. And this is Broussard, and uh, he will have a yard or so. Guy down in the bottom is Ed Thomas. Play selection gets pretty interesting at this point. Washington State now. Errol is the passing his team, or one of the passing his teams of the country. They've run the ball 42 times today and thrown it 26. Houston's run it 15 times and thrown it 32 times. Little waggle. Rosenbach down the middle of the ball is picked off. It may be a touchdown. Only Rosenbaugh can get him. A blocker is out. It is Alton Montgomery. He turns back in the middle of the field, and that is where he goes down, at the Washington State 28-yard line. If he'd stayed on the sidelines, he might have scored. Tim Stallworth finally ran him down. 71-yard return of the interception. Well, it's great pressure by the defense. See on the play. He's going to get pressure. The pass, he's going to try and throw it in this area. What's going to happen is the corner, Montgomery's going to come across over here, pick it off, and just find the whole sideline wide open, and he's just going to run for it. He's just going to go for it right there, steps in front of the receiver, and it's a foot race. It was Lamar Lathan who had a chance to knock down Rosenbaugh. He just couldn't do it. It is first down Houston at the Washington State 28. Touchdown here, and you've got to scramble, and this is Weatherspoon. And he lunges to about the 25. Washington State defense now spending a lot of time out on the field. And we're worried on down to that time when the bones start aching. A lot more time than they did in the first half, that's for sure. Clock is running at coming up on 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second down and six, Houston. David Dacus has already thrown one touchdown pass. He pumps this one down the middle. Good to the 10, inside the 10 to Brian Williams. So it is Dacus who is bringing him back. When Washington State had the football, I said they needed a big stand on this drive by the Houston defensive unit. Not only did they make a stand, they took it away from him and gave him great field position. Right now, Dacus could put the exclamation mark, Dacus could put the exclamation mark on this turn of events, driving the length of the field, putting six points on the scoreboard. It's first and goal just inside the 10. Weatherspoon moves to about the seven, where Savage, Gray, bring him down, and the quarter is over. 
So we've got 15 minutes to go. Houston is threatening to make a ball game of it. We'll be right back. All right, here we go to the final quarter. And this one may tighten up here in a moment or so because Houston is threatening. The ball is just inside the eight-yard line. And it is second down. Kimball Enders is now the running back. Remember, he's a good receiver. David Dacus engineering this comeback. Pumps it. Throws it in the corner. No. Penalty flag is thrown. Might have a defensive hold against Ron Lee down there in the end zone. Dixon was the intended receiver, and I think uh, Lee grabbed a hold of it. And he was a receiver all the way. He was running a quick out and up. He saw Dacus pump fake it to him. When he turned the corner, he tried to lay it up in that far corner. Yep. So, that mistake will move the Houston Cougars even closer. 24-15 is your score. Out the distance. Ball is now just inside the four. It's first and goal for Houston. Vegas taking a good long look before he ducks down for the snap. Little shovel pass thrown inside. Anders to the goal line. No, they're not going to get it to him. He's just four. <laughs> Some of the Houston players are out there begging for it, Keith. Don't blame me. But that is a tight, tight play. Watch the snap from center. He's going back. Pressure's going to come in from the right just as he flips it in front of him. A little shovel, shuffle pass. Well, it's hard to tell. You can't tell whether he's in or out right there. It scares me to death, though, when you see a ball flying around that close to the goal line with that many people grabbing at it. Big Second down and goal. Weatherspoon is in. These formations, you can't really play a goal line defense. Okay. Spread you out. A little more snug this time. Dacus pitches to Weatherspoon. It's a foot race. Won't get there. Boy, that's a heck of a defensive play. He lost yards. And it was Sean Landrum, number 18, uh, the left cornerback, who came up and stuffed it. And you got a Cougar down on the field. It's a big play here, Keith, because it's what up. they do is they get penetration when they come through. Right here, penetration's going to come. And he's going to force the back to take the deep route and allow the pursuit to come over and make the play. Everybody holds their position. Right there, he can't make the cutout. He's got nowhere to go. Forsythe, Ryan Forsythe, junior from Spring, Texas, the right guard. He's the man shaken up. He's got to leave the ball game. Ball is at the two. It is third down and goal for Houston. At the Washington State two, Dell Montgomery comes into the offensive line replacing Forsythe. His wide side of the field is to the left, Keith. I have to believe he's going to look there, give himself a little more room to work. Weatherspoon, the running back. He goes left with it, flips it back inside. Weatherspoon, touchdown. Well, oh, they throw that thing around in traffic, don't they? Oh, they certainly do. They are tough. They are tough. This is a fine example. I'm going to show you a signal in the tele with the telestrator here when we come back to it. He's going to go in motion. Now, when he goes in motion over here, he lifts his hand up when he gets to the other side. All right? Well, he's already there. That's my fault on that one. The receiver is going in motion, Keith. He got to where he wanted to be, lifted his hand up. That was a signal to the quarterback as to what the formation was, what kind of coverage. Then the quarterback knew exactly what to do from that point. Up. Roman Anderson with a kick, and it's good. And we got ourselves a ball game. It's now a two-pointer. Washington State leading 24 to 22, 13, 16 to play. A 
little action at Makapu. And from Makapu to Aloha Stadium, we'll look at the action. Here's a little signal in the run and shoot offense. The receiver is in motion. And watch right here, right there, when he rolled up his hand, that was the signal to the quarterback communicating information as to what kind of defensive coverage it was. From that point on, then he knew he would go back, the little shuffle pass right in the middle for the touchdown. Johnny Robertson's going to kick it off now. As uh, Weatherspoon, he's on the on the special teams. He had 11 unassisted tackles, five fumble recoveries this year on special teams. Victor Wood is the man Washington State wants to return it. That's short. Coming up to the seventh. Wood looking to the sideline. And a hard tackle over there by number eight, Kenny Perry. Ball is out at the 21-yard line, and that's where Washington State will go to work. With 13 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the ball game, and Washington State leading 24 to 22. I think that was the best coverage they've had all day on Victor Wood. Yeah. Take us number 13. You see that uh, he came in and immediately picked up the team. Andre Ware just simply having a bad day. A very, very bad day. You see there, take us five for six. And the defense Sard is taken down right at the line of scrimmage. And the defense continues to roll, Keith. Well, they're fired up now. Oh. I mean, there's hope. Trey Hooper made that tackle. He's a sophomore out of Mineral Wells, Texas. There's nothing in the world like a comeback to get everybody jacked up. And the time to do that, of course, is the fourth quarter. And one side continue, will, will always help prop up the other side. Plus the fact that Washington State in its five possessions, four times they have ended those possessions in Houston territory and no points. Swinton is the running back now for Washington State. Second down, still 10. Rosenball back to throw, has time. Gets it off underneath. It is caught by number 46, Rod Olson. And the junior from Walnut Creek, California, has a first down out at the 41. Houston cannot get pressure on Tim Rosenbaugh with only four people rushing, Pete. They haven't done it all day. And whenever they have four people rushing, four defensive backs in the game, Washington State is going to throw the football. When they bring in that fifth defensive back, to try and get more pressure in the nickel pass, in the nickel package, then Washington State is going to run the football. First down, just outside the 41. There's your try at the run. Doesn't do much. Swinton is taken down after a couple of yards. Again, Hooper on the tackle. As we near the end of the Eagle Aloha Bowl broadcast, we'll have MVPs chosen from each of the teams with Eagle donating a thousand dollar scholarship in each player's name to each school to assist qualified students in the pursuit of their education. Second down, call it nine. Broussard is back at the running back position. Rosenball option outside. Broussard got a crack. Penalty flag goes down. Got a hold coming up. Pretty sure you got a hold coming up. I thought it might have been Mike Smith, the center, who took somebody down. Yep. Yeah, he, uh, after that flag was thrown, he had his hands in his hips like, oh, yeah, I got caught. Are you going to call it on me? Yeah, we're going to call it on you. There you see. We're talking about the second half possessions for Washington State. That, all, that looks like what we showed for Houston at the end of the second quarter. Yep. You now the exact opposite. Olsen is in there at tight end, stays in. Clock showing 11 and a half minutes to play. A 10 yard penalty moves them back to the 35 yard line. Second down and 17. They show blitz. Can't get to him, pass is caught by Stallman out at the original line of scrimmage. There's a penalty flag. And that's what I think will go against Johnny Jackson. Johnny Jackson plays the corner position. He is their best defensive back. And they put him inside there on Tim Stallworth, the best receiver for Washington State. 
trying to cover Tim man to man, which frees up somebody else in that secondary, the double team, another receiver. Stallworth has caught six balls today for 110 yards, but has not reached the end zone. Victor Wood has had the big day among the Washington State receivers. And the big gift. Yes. Swinton, the running back. Officials stop it. Time remaining, 11.02. Utley is out of the uh, offensive front right now. I was just about to say that no. uh, Mike Utley, their All-American, is out. He's getting hot. Mike Smith is playing his position right now. And in some instances, that's pulling guard position, and uh, that's where Mike got in trouble on the All right, make it second down at about five. Tammy looks like he's all of one deep. Here comes the blitz. It passes away. Wimberley. It's out of bounds. No good. That's the right move. I mean, he read the blitz. He changed the play to try and take advantage of it. Tried to get it to the receiver on the outside. Or Cedric Callaway was there all the way. He threw the ball out of bounds instead of taking the loss. Broussard comes back. Wood comes back. Cullum comes back now for Washington State. Rosenbaugh, 16 of 30 for 284 yards. Ball is resting at the 46. Washington State. They lead by only two. Third down and five. Up the middle. It's Broussard. He's got the first down as he reaches the Houston 42-yard line. Alton Montgomery got a hold of him. He tried to shake him. Couldn't do it. Montgomery's playing on a sore ankle. Well, Broussard almost took out Victor Wood on the play. Wood was downfield trying to block for him, Keith, and he couldn't make up his mind whether he'd go inside or outside. Ran right to Victor Wood's back and bounced off a bit. Victor got up rather slowly. And he comes out of the game with Broussard. In fact, Wood right now is kind of dragging an arm as he comes off. Broussard yeah. with 28 carries and 121 yards. Rosenbaugh. Looks at Swinton, keeps it, has a lot of protection, goes big for Wimberley, incomplete. Callaway was over there, and Callaway was zeroed in on it to make the interception, and at that point, Wimberley became a defender, knocked it loose. For Cedric, did everything perfect on that play except for intercept the ball. He's got a receiver he's covering on the far side of the field. He's playing him inside. He's aware of his position. He sees the ball. He moves up. He's ready to pick it off, but he just can't hang on to it. Elma Thomas checks in now for Washington State on second down and 10. Ball near the Houston 41. That was one of those five interceptions that uh, Pat Thomas was talking about he needed to have. Rosenball flips it outside on the option to Rich Swinton, who runs it inside the 35 to the 34. And they'll need now just a little less than three yards. Or the first down. I would think under these circumstances at this point after a, a, a tough football game played in uh, pretty hot circumstances that an option is a pretty good idea. Option offense. Option is a pretty good idea. That's something they've never run before. All season long they've been working Keith with only five running plays for the Washington State team. A counter gap, zone blocking off tackle trying to get to the outside, two draws. That will not get it. Broussard tried in the middle of it. He didn't get a thing. Ball still at 34. Now it is fourth down. Do we get Jason Hansen? Nope. We get Rod Olson bringing the play in from the sideline at tight end. There's the thermometer to give you some idea of what it's like now. Well, there has been a breeze most of the day. There's a great breeze, and that's a bit misleading. The actual temperature isn't over 100 degrees. No. It's, a, it's a temperature of the actual artificial turf. Fourth down and about three. The ball is batted down. Incomplete forward pass on the Houston Cougars. Defense has done the job. Now comes your high drama. At eight minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game, the defense has given the offense good field position.
color, the beauty, the spectacle. A New Year's classic comes to life. ABC Sports presents the 100th Tournament of Roses Parade live Monday morning, January 2nd. Back up against the air conditioner and get some ice on the back of your neck. It's a helpful thing to have around on a day like this. 8.40 to go, and here we go. The Houston Cougars in a comeback, trailing by two on the football. First down at their own 34-yard line. David Dacus is engineering the comeback. Penalty flag goes down. Dacus is buried back around the 21-22 yard line. Paul Hearn may be the man that was detected holding, but if that's the case, I think they'll take the sack. It's holding against Houston. Now the ball was snapped up on the 34. They have marked Dacus down inside the 23. Refuse it. Offense. Decline. Second down. They made that play work, Keith, as they brought pressure from the outside, stopped Dacus from rolling out there and looking upfield. Stopped him right in his track for the pursuit to come from the backside. It'll be second down and about 22. Third time the Houston quarterback has been put out. First time for Dacus. He's not quite as quick to put as Andre Ware. But he's a cool customer. Dumps it out here, and it's incomplete. He was indecisive. He heard the hoof beats coming. He looked downfield. His man was not available, and he tried to dump it to the short man, but it was short of his time. He should have gone with his first decision and thrown the football then. He had his feet underneath him. He was focused downfield, and he pulled it back. Didn't have time, really, to put anything behind making that late third choice. Now choice. it is third and very long, 22. <laughs> Dixon and Phillips have been very quiet lately. Pressure's coming, ball is thrown inside into the stack. And it is incomplete, and the Washington State defense rises up to do a job. That was Mark Ledbetter, number 91, who had uh, the Houston quarterback in his sights and couldn't quite get to it. Well, they ran the game up front. You know, a little game up front to cause some confusion. confusion, And the pressure came from the outside. And the inside was just too congested. Confusion. You've been over here too long. Confusion. Oh. <laughs> Rodriguez Buck kind of an end over ender back at the 35 Victor Wood getting around the corner penalty flag goes down I don't think that run back is going to count 43 yard putt he had a 29 yard return until that flag came out of a pocket here come the judge Back in 1974, Keith, I kept wondering why Notre Dame kept kicking off to Anthony Davis. I'm asking myself the same question with respect to Victor Wood. Yes. Why in the world are they giving him the chance to return on them every time? I, I kick away, angle it to the corner, any place. Well, there is one uh, small danger, having hunted it a little myself, that when you start angling it, though, uh, it's pretty easy to shake it. Get you off your off your line and get, it just makes you a little unsettled. But you got to do it. I mean, if, well, if, yeah. he, if he angles and gets 36 yards, it's better than kicking a 45 and a 13 or 14 yard return. Right. Yep. From the 32 now, Washington State will go to work, and Utley, Mike Utley, is back into the game. He's the rest of the series. Rosenbaugh's pass underneath. Stolen. Lathan after him and gets enough of him to bring him down. Lamar Lathan. I'll tell you, Utley might have to go back and sit down again because his man was getting around him yes, and he, he had was. to reach out and grab him a little bit. The last five Washington State possessions have ended in Houston territory, but they have not scored any points, and there is a penalty story so far. 18 on the day. I think fatigue is a bit of a factor. That's becoming. The speed of this game. Second down and five for Washington State. 7 to play. Running play with Broussard. And that's a first down for Washington State at the 46-yard line. He's a tough customer. He's only a junior. 
man for 1114 yards this past season well I, I said Utley looked a little tired than the play before that time he looked like the All-American as he had the key block on that play opening it up for Broussard Mike's got a lot of body to drag around in the heat 290 <laughs> pounds you know shaken up on the play and coming out of the ball game is Stallworth no Broussard Broussard is shaken up 30 carries 130 yards First down, Washington State, just short of the 47. Goes in ball in trouble. Goes down, Trey Hooper. That is the third solo tackle for Hooper. And it's the sixth time that Rosenball has been sacked today. Trey Hooper, a sophomore, six feet, 270 pounds, very, very quick. Utilizing all of that quickness, trying to get around the big line. Ball comes all the way back to the 41. Second down and 16. Washington State offense been very quiet. Little pop here. Oh my goodness, it's almost gone. The other way in the arms of Mercedric Callaway. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Mercedric lining up right on top of that receiver. Never really backed up. He was over William Pelham, number 88. Looked in there, saw the short drop. And when you saw that short drop, he just came up with speed. And almost had it all. That's put up time for the Washington State offense. Third down and long 16. They haven't done much in this second half. They certainly haven't put the points on the board, and they're only leading by two. <laughs> short of the first down. Pelham making the catch. William Pelham, senior out of Palm Springs, California. He had room. The cushion was deep enough by the Houston defender if he had been able to keep his feet or the ball had been thrown in front of him and he'd picked up the first down. If he had been able to keep his feet, that would have been the difference. He couldn't have actually gone deeper to get the first down because it was a delayed blitz on. Quarterback didn't have the time. He had to get to the football and, and they did a pretty good job, unfortunately. Not enough yards for a first down for Washington State. Myers is in the punt again. He's had a good day. Callaway is the deep man. Put pressure coming at him. Spins it out of there. And it's going to go to the end zone. So Houston will get the football back. First down at their own 20 after a 46-yard punt. 46-yard punt. 5-16 to play in the game. Time, plenty of time, 5-16. Davis is the quarterback for the Houston crew. Washington State leads 24, 22. Mind you again, Dixon and Phillips are very quiet. Both brought balls for well over 1,000 yards of play action. Hides the ball, throws it down the middle. The tight end is wide open. And Kevin Mason who has scored a touchdown on a big play, hauls it in and takes it across midfield. And Dacus, the quarterback, is shaken up for Houston. He's going to lead the ball game. He's walking off to the side. Take a look from the end zone. Great play action. He hides the ball up. But watch from his left side as he's looking downfield. Right there, he takes a hit after the ball is released. Now, Kevin Mason does a good job after he gets his ball, knowing where the open territory is to turn back to. I called him a tight end. Such a position doesn't exist in the run and shoot offense, but that was the position he assumed when he went down into the middle of the field. And he made the catch. So the 6'2", 155-pounder is having a good day. And uh, the concern right now on the Houston sideline is for Dacus, who walked off the field. He's 6 of 9, 112 yards, and he's thrown for two touchdowns. And the Houston team is standing out there with Allen for the back, and here comes Andre Ware. So Ware comes in and he gets the ball first down just outside the Houston 49. He's got to hurry. There's six seconds left on the clock before they have to get a snap off. He didn't do it. He's going to get the five yards in too much time. Right there. They were late getting him out there. Just a little point here to be made. And uh, who knows if these things from the past are applicable. But uh, Houston's three and two when the opposition scored more than 20 points this season. They, take, they call timeout to, uh, to avoid the loss, I guess. 
I didn't see anybody signaling for a timeout. They haven't marked it off yet. When I talked to Jim Eddy, Keith, defensive coordinator for Houston, I said, how many points do you think you can give up and still win the ball game? He said, I think if we give up 30, 31 points, we can still win this ball game. His counterpart, John Smith from Washington State University, said, if we hold them to 28 or less, we'll win this ball game. Let's hear this explanation. They have a charge timeout. Yeah, they charge him a timeout. That saves the five yards, and I think that's what Jack Pardee was arguing on the sidelines. And Dacus is able to come back. So they spend the timeout. Ware came on the field. Dacus came back. I thought he had to sit out of play. Not if he called the timeout, huh? Not if he called the timeout. They called another timeout. You can call three in a row if you want. You're entitled under the rules this year to call them all in a row if you so choose. That's John Jenkins, the offensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars. Very interesting in his decision, Keith, the immediate decision to have Dacus in the ball game, the immediate decision to win, win this game. What will it do to Andre Ware for next year, his confidence? Nothing. You don't think? No. I don't think so. Not at 19 years of age. It's first down. I still don't know how many timeouts were charged there. They give it to Chuck Weatherspoon. He'll pick up a yard to midfield. And that'll be all. It'll be second down at about nine for Houston. 24-22, Washington State. That two-point two difference in the ball game is two extra points missed. Yeah, but it also means the field goal puts them on top. That's right. Vegas runs away from the pressure. Now he's in trouble again. Gets it off over the middle. Pass is caught by James Dixon for a first down. Just before the heat got to him, he unloaded it and found his man. To play James Dix, number 22. JC transfer. If the cross middle just wait for what makes his play is that David Dacus is scrambling. He had the time, was poised, got the ball away for the first down. At the 36 yard line of Washington State. Time remaining, three minutes and 35 seconds. Gets the snap off at two seconds. Weatherspoon into the middle. And the pickup is close to four yards. Maybe five. Looks like the mark is down here at the 31. He was hit pretty solidly by several people after only about two yards. Second down and five for Houston. Near the Washington State 31. Take us back, pressure up the middle, pass down the middle, passes to a wide open Dixon, fumbles the football, Washington State dives on it, covers it inside the five. the man that covered the ball you take a look it's a good play everything works but number 22 James Dixon he gets hits there the balls out from behind Alapate just hits slaps it away and Washington State takes over the ball first down at their own five-yard line with two minutes and 44 seconds to play in the ball game well, the Houston defense did its job the last time. They'll try to pin the Cougars deep. Washington State had come up to the ball. They were short a running back. And so they spend the timeout. The familiar catamaran you see along Waikiki 
Funny little story. Chris Moton, one of the defensive backs for Washington State, ran over an anchor rope of one of the cats the other day and sprained his toe. But he's all right. Now the Cougars come up. First down, the ball at their own five. 2.44 to play in the game, and they lead 24-22. Run it inside with Rich Swinton, and he's out to the eight-yard line. Let's check with Mike Adamley on this confusion over timeouts. Well, Keith, it still doesn't sound quite right. I just got done talking to one of the officials, and he told me that Washington State took a timeout right before time had it expired on Houston, and then they took the timeout for the injury to uh, their quarterback, David Dacus. So they both were assessed a timeout. Again, it doesn't sound quite correct, but that's what the official told me. Well, it's a silly thing to take the timeout. Was it, it was a mistake. A mistake. <laughs> Second down and seven. They're going to run it again, and uh, he gets oh, maybe the 12-yard line, and it's still Swinton carrying the ball. And now you see the time go just inside two minutes. Timeout was called by Houston. Houston stopping the clock now with 1:59 to play. They each now have one timeout remaining. Once more, Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, Washington State was not assessed a timeout. Again, checking with the official one time. This is the way it stands right now. Houston just took a timeout. They have one remaining. Washington State has two. So, I still don't know why Dacus, well, whatever. That's long gone. Third down, about four. Big play here for both teams. Rosenbaugh's pass caught out at the 16-yard line, and it looks like a first down. Make it the 17-yard line. It is a first down. Clutch gut catch by Tim Stolworth. Rosenbaugh came up to that center. He looked around Keith very calmly. He had a man in motion, forcing the defense to show its hand so he could get a pre-read before the snap. Made up his mind what it was. Went for the short pass. First down, and the Houston Cougars take what I believe is their last timeout. That's right. Washington State has two and Houston none. And time remaining, one minute and 52 seconds. These guys are taking this thing to the last brick, aren't they? Oh, they certainly are. But I'll, I'll tell you, I've got my mind made up who should be MVPs. In this ball game. You have a vote? No. Nope. Well, I just thought I'd tell you anyway. Well, good. <laughs> tell me. I think Victor Wood I should too. be the MVP for the Washington State team, and I, uh, and I think David Dacus. You know, by virtue of him coming back in this ball, into this ball game in the second half and making it a game. They've already given it. So then, what's what we'll do? Victor Wood. Four for 43 receiving. Punt returns three for 52. Kickoff returns five for 143. Two touchdowns. Dacus, eight of 11, 152, and two touchdowns. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Eagle in the names of those players to each school's general scholarship fund to assist qualified students in furthering their education. Washington State's ball. First down now. Out at the 18-yard line. Rosenbaugh hands it off to Swinton. Penalty flag goes down as Swinton is run down. The leading tackler there would have been Keith Jenkins. I saw his number 64. Could be a hold right here. Against Washington State. Let me see. It's against Washington State. Do they have to call? Do they have to throw another pass? Can they run the ball out? 147. They'll snap the ball. No, they got to throw it. Houston might refuse this. Somebody's hurt. Looks like somebody's down on the field. There. No, that was just a player bending over. The Houston, uh, Houston choosing to uh, let it stay because it was a two-yard loss. So it's second down and twelve. They need the ball. And they'll take it anywhere they can get it. They prefer it in this neighborhood. This is Broussard spinning his way out near the 24-yard line. So that's a good tough run by Steve Broussard. Well, the big boys up front are just gutting it out, Keith. 
for that two-point lead, holding on to it. You see there, the clock ticking down. No timeouts left for Houston. Broussard now, 32 carries, 137 yards. It is third down and about five. This is where they may have to go. No, they will not go. They give it to Broussard. And Broussard is walked down at the 25-yard line. Reggie Burnett made the tackle. Houston cannot stop the clock. Washington State now coming up on fourth down. We'll have to punt it. So Houston will get their hands on the ball. I think they've got to go for a block here because they've got 19 seconds to run the, a play and about a second and a half about two seconds. more left on the clock. Two yeah. seconds. So well, what I think they'll do is they'll take the penalty. Hey, they, won't, this they won't snap the football. They'll just take the penalty. It'll be two seconds on the clock. Then they'll take the snap and the game is over. They don't have to punt it. They don't have to punt it. They'll take the five-yard assessment. And just take the snap and sit down. Correct. Washington State's going to win the football game by two points. Rosenball will finish with 19 of 36, 306 yards. Broussard, we told you, 32 carries, 137 yards. But the guy who put him in the end zone twice today and kept giving him field position on kick returns was Victor Wood. And his talent part, number 13, was a man who almost made his dreams come true for Houston. Oh, that's right. As he brought him back in the second half, David Dacus. He's a senior. This is his last game, and he almost made that dream come true. There's the snap. Rosenball takes it. Game's over. The game ends with a fist fight out in the middle of the field. Long, hard day. It's unfortunate, too. They've, they've been going at it quite a bit all afternoon, back and forth. It's unfortunate this game has to end up this way. Well, the coaches finally get out there. The melee is still going on. And uh, tempers just flared in the final second of the ball game. And it looks like now the teammates have finally gotten them separated. Well, so there's still some pushing and shoving going on down in the middle of the field. They're trying to extract one of the Washington Staters from the Houston group. But uh, that was... Uh, Certainly a temper-laden final second, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. All throughout the ball game, there have been little pushes, little yep. shoves, that kind of thing, but it never escalated into this. Todd Barry, our spotter today, Dave Burnson, our statistician, Keith Jackson, Lynn Swan, Mike Adamley, we hope you enjoyed the Eagle Aloha Bowl with a final score, Washington State 24 and Houston 22.